never get tired of that. You sound funny. I do sound funny. But hopefully everybody at home can hear you fine. Yes, I hope so. (laughs) Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Succubus Club. I believe it's our 133rd edition of the show. That's a lot. And uh, the last one of this season. Um, We are your weekly dose of Buffy and Angel music, news, spoilers, and special guests. Yes. That's Kitty right there. That's Candy. And right next to me in the hot seat, Jane Espenson. Woo! Hey, how do you do? You want to pull that for you? Pull that towards you a little bit? Sure. That's fine. There you go. Just get comfortable. If you don't know who Jane Espenson <laughs> is, I know it's kind of weird. It's, 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 it'll, it might spring back on <laughs> might attack you. If you don't know who Jane Espenson is, then get out of the closet. Get out of the vacuum cleaner. Go do something. Um, <laughs> go do something. I don't know. But for those, you know, writer, executive producer, just co-executive. 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 Pro- and co means not. <laughs> oh, is that what that means? <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, you are. <laughs> and just Jane of all trades. So. Oh, that's cute. I think she said that last time we were Yes, yeah, she did. That's right. Welcome really? back to the show. Yes. Oh, I'm Third. very clever. <laughs> <laughs> Third time that Jane has been on the show. Yes. and it's become a ritual. Yes, and each time she comes at the end of the season <laughs> to... Uh, uh, Explain things to us if right. as much as she can, right. and uh, and maybe drop a few hints and uh, leave us wanting more. Apparently, yeah. do we have background music? Uh, not yet. Oh, okay, just wondering <laughs> because I'm so on top of things. <laughs> um, and you know the thing is, so far, knock on wood, is that every time we have a special guest. There's always something that goes wrong. Like, even in the beginning, you know, some... Technical problem, technical or problem. they're late, or... So, you know, something. or we're, I don't know, something. So nothing has gone wrong yet. I could throw up at any moment. <laughs> we giant goldfish in here. It's possible. We supply our guests with nothing but the best, so we have an, an open box of giant goldfish crackers and a bottle of water here for Jane. <laughs> That's right. mm. And she's chowing down. Yummy. She's stoked. <laughs> yeah. Just give me those crackers. So, so anyway, Jane's here. We're going to talk about last night's uh, season finale, Buffy. Yeah. Um, two to the grave. And, uh, two, two what? Two for two. No, what? Two, two, two to go. Two to go and great. There there you go. I like together. to see her like try and get out of those things. <laughs> putting them together. I know. That's I'll cool. Um, but you didn't write either of these episodes. No. But um, in fact, you didn't write uh, as much this season as you have in the past, at least That's for Buffy. Right. Yeah. Um, um, why? <laughs> well, because I, so, I wrote a lot early in the season. Yes, I did. wrote episode three and then half, half of episodes four and five and then Double Meat Palace in the middle of the year. So that was a total of three. The other writers at that point had all written like two or two and a half. Yeah. They're like, stop so they all got, the episodes, Jane? Yeah. They all got assigned <laughs> the remaining episodes and then they were all gone. Oh. Yeah. Did you want, I mean. Oh, God, I would have loved to write more. Yeah. But we have a very big staff right now. Were you doing something, were you writing for the comic books or the No, nope, I was just nothing? sitting there just twiddling my thumbs. Oh, oh, see, I thought you were busy doing <laughs> something else and maybe that was why, but. No, I did, I did the four-part Buffy comic, which is called right. uh, Haunted, which is out now. Right. Oh, okay. um, and so that took some of my time, but. Um, this year, we're hoping with you know Buffy, Angel, and Firefly yeah. all needing to be written for. Yes. Um, we're hoping we all get more. And I finally saw the little preview for Firefly. Yes. It, oh. it, it's all sci-fi. It's sci-fi, You didn't yeah. know that? Well, I, I don't know what I thought it, it was. Isn't it a sci-fi uh, western? It's so. very much a western. When you go on a planet, there's horses. It's And people, <laughs> it's true, there's horses in the pilot. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. And it's it really has the feel of a western. It's, you know, the... What Star Trek was originally pitched as, Wagon oh. Train to the Stars. Oh. Only this one really feels like a Western. Okay, see, so, and that will be on Friday nights yes. on Fox. On Fox. Sunday nights on the WB will have Angel. At right? 9 o'clock. At ni- nine, 9. 9 o'clock. That's what, they, that's what Fury said, because I was freaking out thinking that it was going to be opposite The Simpsons. We can't oh, have that. Oh, no, no. No, no 9 no. o'clock. And I was like, yeah. uh. And then we have Buffy on Tuesdays at 8. Right. Nice, evenly spread week. Yeah. That's right. I appreciate that instead of, like, all clumped together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, somebody did want uh, to know what it was, what what entailed the co-writing process, because uh, you seem to be the only one that's involved in co-writing. <laughs> Why yeah. is that? And, um, and how does that work out? I think because I'm always the one volunteering, going, Aww. if anyone needs help, I'll do something. Um, and... The, the two different co-writing experiences this year were very different. Um, mm-hmm. We followed a very different process. One was with, uh, one Doug, was with Doug and one was with Fury. David Fury, yes. Yeah, and um, Doug and I tried something we hadn't really tried before where I wrote a whole draft. He did his re- rewrite on it. Oh. Then I wrote him, rewrote him and he rewrote me. It didn't really work well because both of us would throw out all the other person's stuff and write our own version. <laughs> 
And then the next person would get it, and they'd throw everything out and write their own version. So we just like write a whole script. Oh, yeah. It, it doesn't um, cut down on the time. It yeah, actually adds exactly, to it. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was, so it was sort of, you know, two, two views of Mount Fuji instead of, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> a a <laughs> single, single view of something better. Yeah. Um, so... And Fury and I did it completely differently. This is much more the normal way to do it, Mm -hmm. where I wrote a half and he wrote a half. And that worked especially well for that episode, which was called Life Serial, because that was the one with the four different storylines, each each in a separate act. Mm -hmm. Buffy tries a different job. Which two did you write? I wrote the last two. So it was Mummy Hand in the Magic Shop. And um, um, that the was really kitten, funny. Kitten poker with Spike. Oh. So, yeah, I should have known. I really should have known. That was a fun. One. I, I really like that. I like writing the comedies. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. great. And and speaking of which, your first episode of the season, Afterlife, was not a comedy. It, right. it was one of the more serious ones you've ever written. Absolutely, it was ha- the most serious. And one. I, I know we got in touch with you to let you know how much we we really yeah. love that episode mm-hmm. after it aired. And you told us that it was such a departure for you. Can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, I was. Um, I don't quite remember how the assigning of it happened. I think it came up. Uh, it's just I would normally be third in the rotation, sort of Marty's Marty's at the top, then David Fury, then me, um, and so it would make sense that episode three would be mine. Right. Now I normally write comedies, and I think I remember Joss saying, "You don't have to do this one if you want. You can wait for a comedy." But Doug had also said he wanted to write a comedy. We had you know, Fury wanted to write a comedy, so it was sort of you know. You know, you're probably going to want to take this one. Um, <laughs> okay. I think you're going to want to take it. You yeah. may not get one for right. a while. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So um, so I said, okay, you know, we'll give it a try. And um, I actually had a wonderful time writing it. It's actually, it's interesting finding other ways to be entertaining. It's interesting. Absolutely. Um, it challenges you. Yeah, exactly. I found it very challenging. And it turned out really well. I was pleased with it. So I felt like it, it was, was one of the yeah. better episodes yeah. uh, f- for me personally of the season. It actually spawned what will be my vote for a best one-liner of the entire year. And that is Spike's line where he says, uh, every night I've saved you. Oh, thank you. That is you. my absolute favorite line of the yeah. entire season. That I, was, I was very fortunate on that because usually those those moments like that are all Joss. And, they, you know, like I've, I've commented before, if anyone ever compliments a line from an episode, it's a Joss line. That scene was just like I wrote it in the first draft. Yeah. Marty said, this is great. This is a great. You know, I think she would, she would say, I didn't know you could write like this. <laughs> You're like, uh, thanks. <laughs> I think. No, no. Marty. No, Marty's cool. Um, but she, she really loved that scene, and I felt very um, very fortunate that it stayed how I wrote it. And um, um, I was very, I surprised myself a little with that. And there's other stuff in that episode that was completely changed, and much of it was just... Um, the moment I think is so amazing of Anya cutting herself and laughing was something Joss pitched just off the top of his head. Like, what if this happened? Oh, and we were that's just like, scary. Oh, that was creepy. skin is going to crawl off. Oh. That's one of the creepiest yeah. moments of yeah. the season. Or, or your skin might be, you know, taken off by a witch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Slaying. <laughs> There's Slaying. always that. Cool. Yeah. Um, I did have a, a couple questions um, about Double Meat Palace and Afterlife, so let me get to those. and then okay. we'll, Before we'll get... we jump into the... Other things in the season finale last night as well, which we I'm sure we have a lot to say. Uh, okay. Before we forget, everybody, uh, Jane can only stay until about 7 o'clock. Right. So she's here for the normal two hours that we usually do a show. Um, we will be on the air until 8 o'clock. So we'll save like maybe more of our personal uh, views on the on the yeah. season finale and maybe talk about Angel. Ooh, we're gonna talk about oh Angel. Oh my god! <laughs> I, got some, I got some things to talk about Angel. I'm sure you do. And you guys can just talk about me because yeah. you know I'll be in the car going to right. my team. I won't hear you. So you can you know go. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, so that's, um, yeah. My, I've dyed my hair blonde. It's I, quite I was shocking. I say that. I like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I could never do that. I could never go blonde. No, I, well, no, it's a horrible. You look good. Though. Yeah, I, I like right. it. I like the, oh, thank you. I like she went blue once. I did go blue. And back to red. A little too dark. <laughs> okay, about afterlife. Let's get back to yes. that. Yes. <laughs> people don't want to hear about her hair. Um, about Wait, wait. There's people that can't hear? What? They can't hear it all or just can't hear me? Oh, Ooh, why is that? Oh, well. Oh, that seems like get a, on a that. producer kind of issue. <laughs> Okay. Not the co-executive producer no. type of thing. Right. The not producer. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll continue on. I'm sure s- there are people yeah. who can hear us. And if not, I'm sure somebody is taping this, and uh, we'll get the MP3 up on yeah. our site, so not to worry about that. Um, let's just continue. Uh, about Afterlife, not Afterlife, and especially about the thing that I just mentioned. Um, this question is, when Buffy went to Spike's crypt and sat there in silence in Afterlife, why do you think she was there? As the writer of the episode, or just as a fan, what do you think was going through Buffy's mind at that point? And, <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> in particular, during Spike's Every Night I've Saved You speech. 
Because she did. She sat there in silence. Right. She really didn't say anything. Yeah. This is. She went there. She sat there in silence with him there. Right. This is yeah. when she was. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. know. I know what you're talking about now. <laughs> like I haven't seen it in a yeah, while. Yeah. It's but. been a while. Um, I think she didn't know why she was there, except she wanted to be with someone who wasn't demanding anything of her and wasn't expecting it. Expecting it exactly, yeah. Yeah. and someone who understood could understand. Yeah. yeah, because he has he has a line that I really liked where. Um, he looks at her hands. He knows right away that she crawled out of a grave. Yeah, I love and it, that part. Yeah, and it's hard to hear. It's, uh, the line that gets a little lost, but he says, um, uh, done it myself or yeah. been, been there. Oh, yeah, I remember what it was like for me. I remember yeah, that. yeah. There's, there's an implication that, that, that he, he is identifying with her because he also crawled out of his own grave. Um, it also happens in that scene in, in the crypt, actually, because she sees... Um, she sees his hand or something. She looks... I don't know. There was another moment in that scene where they... He was comparing the same. I yeah, don't, don't mind me, <laughs> but there's something. Yeah, there was something. I, I know it's, sure it's, what it was it's nagging me. Yeah, but um, okay. it was so long ago. It does. Yeah. does it? I'm like that's this I know, season. It feels like a long time ago to me too. Before the musical, after yeah. the musical. Yeah, <laughs> and really, musical really after everything. the musical. Um, but yeah, I think that's what it was. And then, then when he says the "I've saved you lots of times," I think. I think all we can do is know what we would be thinking and and the kind of person Buffy is, that she has to be thinking, wow, what a guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hate the fact that it cuts off right after that line. That I would love to know what happened after that. Yeah. Well, Buffy doesn't give a lot. Buffy, Buffy takes it all in, and she has her deep feelings, but she doesn't open up to people. She She doesn't tell them what she's thinking. She doesn't like to show what she's thinking. Right. Um... Maybe she's afraid of demanding something from them that she's not afraid that she's afraid they won't give. Um, but she she tends to be very closed off as a character, which which is a wonderful and interesting fault to play with. It kind of comes back to kick her in the ass in the end, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and it. I mean, I think the most brilliant thing we did this year, well, the musical, but like Aside right behind the musical, that. is um, th- this whole thing maybe her her insane delusion. Oh, normal and again. It, that was so yeah, yeah, brilliant. It episode. makes so much sense that when, when you actually look at it, it's like it does. the way yeah. they were explaining it in the doctor's office in various right. scenes. I'm just like, they're making it so possible. Absolutely. That it when was you scary. Go, like, you inserted Dawn into this fantasy. Now these three guys are your nemesis. Right. You, the, the your reason. fantasy's falling apart your, and your fantasy isn't comforting you anymore. Buffy's not happy right. in this world. It just and they they say your moment of lucidity last yes. summer when you're like, oh, that's when she died. Yep. And, it's, I, I, and I like how they say, you know, yeah, these, these three geeks are like right. are your nemesis and nemesis. Nemesis. Yeah. You, you've run out of like real scary things to right. challenge you. Right. Right. Exactly. It all and made it, sense. It all made a lot of sense. I think that that part of what makes that make sense is that Buffy is so much in her own head. Yeah. Is that we know Buffy is always a little bit of an observer she's always watching the world a little bit so i think after spike said the the thing about i save you every night i think buffy kept her own counsel i think she walked out and didn't show him what it meant to her to hear him say that which is exactly why the relationship with spike didn't work out it didn't really not work out because he doesn't have a soul and the fact that she can't love him has to do with her so much more than it has to do with him. Right. She can't. She finds it so hard to love. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. Actually. Yeah, it, it's because a lot of people just want to blame it on Spike. Right. And I'm not saying that there's not he's not at fault for anything that he's done. I'm not saying that at all. But it does go both ways. They're both kind of yeah. messed up. They both are kind of messed up. And of course, you know, anytime we talk about the Buffy Spike relationship, we should remember he did a very very bad thing. How did you feel about that? I mean, because we know that you like Spike. You I love Spike. And I I was very worried about the attempted rape mm-hmm. because that's not something you play around with. That's not something... It's hard to come back it's from. It's very hard to come back from. And, you know, okay, Luke and Laura came back from it, but that was a different time. Yeah, yeah you're talking 20 years ago. Yeah, then. exactly. And it... it we want to... I think we have to be very careful that we're not saying anything about humans <laughs> when it when we say that spike looked into his soul at that moment and saw the demon in him and that's what made him want to go get a soul okay okay this is okay, good okay. <laughs> thank you okay. for going here what a yes. segue what a segue. you are a great segue kind of person <laughs> yes in my mind that's 
We, we, we did a big old mislead on y'all where we wanted you to think he was going to go get the chip. We knew oh. the whole time from the very beginning he was going to go get a soul. Oh. And when he <laughs> says, I want Buffy you. to have what she deserves, give the Slayer what she deserves, he means a lover with a soul. No way. <laughs> we had this conversation. <laughs> okay, Candy and I had this conversation in the hallway, and I was going, and I, I was duped. All right, I was duped. I thought that I knew was. that it could go any way because I know you guys. You, you right. are, you're mischievous. And, and you guys did it that way because, you know, like, I, I want to be like I was before. And, you know, he didn't use his Greg Brady exact words because what does that mean? <laughs> right. Okay. Vague. Right. Very, very vague. vague. And if we're vague, we're vague for a reason. I knew that. See, I knew that. And a lot of people on the Internet guessed it. A lot of the people guessed either that he wanted a soul or that he wanted to be human again. Right. Um, I guessed that I last week. Yeah. Last week when Fury was sitting right there, I said, you want to know my theory? He said, what? I said, I think he's going to become human. And he looked at me like I was crazy. Yes, he did. He's well, <laughs> Fury always looks at you like you're crazy. I know, that's true. You can I, say, I think it's time to order lunch, and he'll look at you like it's <laughs> sprouted <laughs> antlers. <laughs> and, and I agreed with the human thing, because as we're watching, I'm like, oh, he wants to be human, but the soul, th- that threw me. It did. I wasn't expecting that at all, and I was completely unspoiled. Because yeah, good. The, the thing going for it, uh, for him wanting to get a soul as opposed to getting de-chipped, there's, there, there's inconsistencies, because if all he wanted to do was hurt Buffy, he could already hurt right, Buffy. He can hurt Buffy. Second thing being... Um, uh, well, I know I had a second thing, but <laughs> <laughs> no. But the, but the fact that if if you make it so that he goes to get a soul for her, right? Um, that turns him into it, it makes it much more romantic. It makes it right, which is this, which is the area that is so very dicey because we know Spike, we love Spike, and we know he's in a very special situation where he has this demon in him um, and this lack of a soul that allowed him to try to rape her. A human guy that says. I saw the badness in my heart when I tried to do that. I have gone and fixed myself. I am redeemed. You can trust me now, baby. Mm-hmm. Might not be the same thing. Right. And we got to be real careful that we're not saying that. So he's officially a vampire with a soul, not he's a human. vampire with a soul, not human. Okay. Yeah. So there's two of them. Now there are two of them. That's, That's right. That's the next set of questions. Right. Um, Which raises the issues... What happens in the universe when there's Prophecies. a vampire with a soul? Prophecies. What right. do they mean? Do they mean anything anymore? Do they mean it, it will... So no, Spike will kill the sun? Is that... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's crossing over to Angel. He's going to, yeah. Um, no, because I... And I'll, I'll ask well, can you lose question. a soul if, you have, if they have sex? <laughs> Uh, that was a specific gypsy curse. That okay, doesn't apply to Spike. <laughs> You're like, thank God. <laughs> I was just checking. I was hoping. Good, we can have more sex now. Yay, more sex. I don't know. Uh, it's I know, it's I know. tough after It's tough. I know it's done. very tough. I know there's a long road. Okay. I'm just it was, I was kidding. But I'm not, I'm not saying they won't. I'm not saying they will. Okay. I'm just saying it's interesting. It's <laughs> evil. <laughs> Um, but that is uh, the most interesting question here in that this, this is dealing with Buffy and Angel, um, both shows. Uh, this is a question sent in. Would it be fair to say that Cordelia and Angel and Buffy and Spike are like Buffy Angel light? It seems like on the surface the formula is just being repeated. Cordy is a warrior a la Buffy and Spike is a soul vampire a la Angel. To me it seems like Cordy and Spike are becoming Buffyized and Angelized in order to accommodate a romantic story. Am I completely wrong? It's an interesting it's an interesting supposition. It you can make the argument. Um we certainly are fighting that. We we I wasn't there in the decision to um to train Cordy and make her tougher, but right. boy, I support that it, it, regardless of whether uh I mean, suppose that we decided we can't do that because it makes her too much like Buffy and we'd be repeating the Buffy-Angel romance. Mm -hmm. Well, then we're screwing Cordy out of a chance to be a good, strong female, um, empowered and fighting. Um, And, yeah, you know, in in Souling Spike, we, we... I was in on those conversations, and I know we actually had a lot of discussion about whether or not we, in fact, should not do it because it is exactly like Angel. And after much discussion, decided it's only like Angel if we let it be. They have a very different dynamic. Mm -hmm. Um, Buffy has never been gooey-eyed over Spike the way she was with Angel. Their relationship... The outside world is what kept Buffy and Angel from being together, and you know, in the sense of the the gypsy curse. Right. Um, what keeps Buffy and Spike from being together are their very natures. That, <laughs> that they are not star-crossed lovers. They are two people who, who are thwarted in any attempt to come together by who they are. Mm-hmm. It's I, to me, it feels very different. And I, 
the last thing we would want to do is repeat a formula. That's um, what we've been yeah. told through various interviews from almost all the writers, is that with Spike and Buffy, you didn't want to do another Buffy and Angel. Right. So I all think, this time... Think, yeah, I think we've succeeded in making it different. It's true. If you describe it in those words... It, it it does sound like we have found a formula. On the surface, it right. does. Warrior woman meets an, with a vampire with a soul. Uh, what I think is interesting is that you can have that and have it feel so completely different. To me, the Cordy, Cordy Angel relationship is is a very mature relationship between two people with old souls. Um, the Spike Buffy relationship is a completely immature relationship between two people <laughs> who can't who can't, can't stand find, each other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can't see each other. That's interesting. Um, and they're both different than what Buffy Angel was. I, I, I'm not sweating too much that that's what we're doing. I hope it's not what we're doing. Good to hear. Okay, we're going to take a break. Okay. When we come back, we have more questions for Jane, not to yeah. worry. And uh, we will get to what song is this? We're going to be, uh, this is from Angel, actually. We, oh, have, a, we have a request for an Angel song. And this, this goes out to... Um, uh, a listener in Australia. She's Her name is Steph. It's not Slayer Steph. It's Steph in Australia. And she wanted to hear uh, Vast doing touch. So here we go. Vast with touch. What's that? Okay, right on. Do, 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 do. Ooh, see, that, that's our technical problem. All right. I'm, I'm the technical problem. Okay, apparently. there we go. Welcome. Was, <laughs> welcome back to the Succubus Club on KLBC.org, your truly underground radio station. And that was Vast doing Touch. <laughs> touched. Touched. And that is from Lonely Hearts from Angel 1.2, and that's for Steph in Australia. Thanks so much for listening. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. We are on an hour earlier. It's just about 5.30 here on the left coast, and we have... The amazing, the wonderful Jane Espenson in the mm-hmm. studio live with us. <laughs> and if you're just joining us, we're just kind of getting started. I yeah. mean, Jane's going to be here till 7. So um, we have a lot to go over, a lot to discuss. guys. We're just kind of getting started. We're kind of getting in on what's going on. Yeah, she just addressed uh, a lot of the uh, confusion maybe about last night's, the end of the, the right. episode um, with Spike getting a soul. He apparently... Went there to wanted get, it. Yeah, that's what he wanted, that's and, right. and because the, the the term that he they kept using was get, give Buffy what she deserved, what right. she deserved, what she deserved. I thought um, again, they don't use a term over and over again unless we're it, well, unless it means something. I right. kept thinking, like I kept going, okay, I'm like, oh, Spike, just get over it. You know, I was like, <laughs> just stop it. You know, stop freaking out. Just get over it, you know. She doesn't want to be with you. She doesn't want to be with you. Just stop being a jerk. <laughs> he loves bitch, and he knows it. I remember know, that was established before he even knew he loved I Buffy. Know. Um, he but doesn't get over things. No, he doesn't. <laughs> He's a little obsessive. I mean, he look. He saw. He saw um, Hallie and recognized her mm-hmm. as either being or looking like um, Cecily. Cecily. Yes, yeah. Absolutely. He doesn't. He doesn't get over stuff. Was that like gag casting, or was that on purpose, or? Uh, I'm not sure. I I I think. It, I know they didn't call her and bring her in. We want Cecily to play this. She came in on audition to be Hallie. Oh, oh okay. But then once she had the role, you played we made the decision it. to um, yeah, play with that. Okay, that makes sense. Um, before we get into Double Meat Palace, the uh, other full episode that you wrote this season, because right. we talked about Afterlife, um, really quick again about Spike, oddly enough, since we love talking about him, um, the scene in Seeing Red, uh, which I just love so much, was right after the attack when he's in this crypt talking with Clem. Right. Clem. Um, yeah, we love Clem. How, who Please. doesn't love Clem? Uh, exactly. Who doesn't, really? <laughs> and people want Clem and Sophie to get together. Apparently it's this, oh, this big, big uproar. They, they deserve happiness. Oh, Clem and Dawn. Okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that scene... Um, it was amazing. It was it was what a great dialogue by Spike. Was it written later in the episode? Because uh, was it written later after it had already been um, taped? That scene, uh, Do you know? Yeah, I think it was. Um, there were a number of Clem scenes that we inserted in the last couple of episodes because they came in short. Okay. Um, and you know, it's easy to bring Clem in to do <laughs> a new scene. It's easier than to bring in the stars who were already shooting the next week's episode. Um, so that seems like a really important scene for Spike. It, it, it yeah, I, I think that was one of the ones that was written written later. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, let's get to Double Meat Palace. Uh, somebody wants to know, was the symbolism of the demon in Double Meat Palace deliberate? And if so, what is it a metaphor for? Anyway. Well, it was an enormous penis, but <laughs> <laughs> we did not realize that at the time. Oh my God. <laughs> we did not know it was going to look like that. We really thought it was going to look like an eel uh, or a lamprey, rather. Um, coming out of the top of her head. Now, if we thought for a minute, we'd realize, well, a lamprey kind of looks like a big penis. Um, <laughs> and it 
particularly did the way it was realized. It wasn't intentional. <laughs> That's now, true. Now, I mean, would we would we have a lesbian cut off a giant penis? No, it, that's that's <laughs> icky and unpleasant and very strange. Um, however, once it had happened, we felt free to comment on it because and you couldn't you stop would laughing. Comment on it. <laughs> yeah, so we gave we had the um, the Willow Terra conversation where they're talking about it. Yeah, um, which I thought worked really well. I felt it's what we call hanging a lantern on something when something when there is something obvious about what you've done obviously flawed or coincidental or or just something that that you are afraid people are going to be distracted by noticing oh. mm-hmm. you do what's called hanging a lantern on it which is you have the actual characters pointed out so people can go oh okay there is that funny looking thing in the corner now i can pay attention to what's happening in the story oh, okay. you can kind right. of say that buffy as a show does that yeah. as a right. whole you know right. it, it mocks itself so so often yeah it's, we're not we're, I, we we don't want to say mock so much because we don't make fun of the show right. or okay. our characters but we do we do sometimes go Look at that funny thing. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I guess it's kind of like mocking no, but, huh? <laughs> no, but it is cool because sometimes we will see things and then one of the characters will point it out. And, right. and I like that. because It happens it so right. often. It's, and it's, it's, to me, I love it because it's, so it's real. very real. Yeah. I mean, you can think of it as, oh, it's a cheat to get out of something you didn't intend or, or something that's uh, awkwardly coincidental. But, in fact, I think you're just sort of saying, you know, gee, in, in real life you have those things all the time. You comment on, on them and you move on. Um and so I thought I was very pleased um, with whoever wrote that exchange. I think that was in, um, was that a Denite script? It was the one where uh, Anya was trying to get revenge. Oh. Well, anyway, whoever it was, they did it. I thought it was really clever to, ca- to point that out. No, might have been Drew. Might have been Was Drew. that older and far away? Or, uh, yeah, it might have been. I think oh. it might have been. So it, that would make it Drew. Anyway. Okay, yeah. Um, anyway, on. that was very clever. <laughs> um, and, yeah, no, we did not, promise me, we did not intend that to look like a big penis, and we were very startled when yeah. it did. Okay, good. Like, oh, my. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, one more question about Double Me. Um, who decided on the fast food restaurant as Buffy's place of employment, and did you have a specific experiences in fast food that you drew on to her? Pretty much everybody had specific fast food experiences except me. I never, I never worked in fast food, but Marty had done a lot. Marty had worked at McDonald's and really? had a lot of interesting insight. My boyfriend had worked at um, some dreadful fast food places in Ohio, um, um, really just awful sounding places. So he had all the information about the the buttons and the beeping on the grill. Yeah. It was like we, you know, they, to make it completely uniform. Because um, we, I always thought to myself, why isn't she just waitress? You know, right, but then again, it wouldn't be funny. I mean, it wouldn't be as funny. <laughs> right, and we've already seen her do that because that's what she did in, in Anne. Yeah. That's true. So we right. we actually we almost made, backed away from having her in fast food when one of when Josh remembered that she had waitressed before, mm. and we were like, well, yeah, but this feels different. Um, fast food is a whole different kind of job than waitressing in a diner. Um, There's no tips. But, yeah, oh, you wouldn't believe the amount and length of the conversations about <laughs> what Buffy should do for a living. That's a big um, deal, though. I mean, yeah. it really is. It should what be. were some yeah. of the things that didn't make it? Oh. <laughs> Can you say it? I don't remember. Phone sex operator? No. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I think we probably talked about, um, you know, time life operator kind of jobs. Um, of phone sales and um, stuff like that. Um Oh, we just talked about oh, every, every kind of awful job that people had done. Yeah. I used to paint dorm rooms and stuff. And <laughs> I think we talked about you know janitorial jobs and that kind of thing. And working, you know, some of the things that we explored in in um, Life Serial. Um, right. And we talked, you know, being a cop and oh gosh, um, various <laughs> like things Charlie's like that. Angels. <laughs> <laughs> no, just much more, much more grubby. Yeah. Um, we, yeah, we, it needed to be. It needed to Construction be unpleasant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It needed to be. It needed to be something just awful. Oh, and yeah. we decided finally that fast food was about as awful as we could think of. Um, and I love food. I think food is funny. I mean, there's a reason Dan Candy is my script and gingerbread is my script. You, you, and when people mishear... No coincidence. Yeah, there's a quote. Food is funny. Food is funny. Look at, look at Weird Al Yankovic. How many of his songs are about food? You take something that's, that's about love and you make it about food and it's hilarious. That's true. So, um, I love Weird Al. I can't oh, wait I to see your scripts next year then. <laughs> Who doesn't love Weird Al? Who doesn't? Nobody, I saw him nobody doesn't love. I saw him once in, in Century City and I was like, oh, that's Weird Al. Oh, I see him. I've seen him a couple times. And, um, He's funny. I like him. Oh. 
Too bad we don't need. Where are you going to put Weird Al in some of the songs, some of the episodes? Oh, I'd love to. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, the recent story be about on about I'm sorry Willow Terra, the whole right. Terra death, um, and Willow, what happened to her afterwards. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, um, a lot of people are upset over right. Tara's death. I'm um, still upset. Yeah, as as we intended, we're we're upset ourselves. Uh, so that yeah, there was. I didn't think Joss was going to be able to do it. He he really had to struggle with the with killing her, and the fact that it was so painful was what we knew would make it work. That's we knew it would hurt, and that's what we needed because otherwise you just can't take Willow to where we needed to take her. Well, what about all the, how do you guys feel about all the backlash that's happened because of that? I hadn't been aware that there was backlash, although we did talk about it. Um, we knew, what we knew has been done with gay characters is you introduce one just to kill them. We knew that wasn't what we were doing. Tara had been on the show a very long time, well, not a very long, not, not as long as Buffy, but she clearly had not been brought in as cannon fodder right. um, because when you do that you bring them and you kill them right away right. and it's in it when you do that it's a punishment we felt that this was so clearly not a punishment for being gay her being gay she wasn't gay bashed you know she was she was shot accidentally um, we we were we did talk about it we did talk about we're, we're doing that thing we're killing the lesbian but we don't it didn't feel that way to us because she wasn't the lesbian character anymore. Willow and Tara are both lesbians. Willow didn't die. Willow is our main character. If you were gonna wanted to make some horrible message about killing the lesbians, you'd kill her. No, but she went um, evil. She she did go evil, but she went evil out of deep loving grief. Um, and that, that was something you guys had decided. Right. Yeah, we knew we were gonna make her evil. Um, we had to figure out well how, and that seemed to be the best way how. Um, and and we were th- we really do think of them as one of our couples. You know, we've got Buffy Spike, Xander Anya, and and Tara Willow. And we we really don't. Th- when we think of a story for them, a situation for them, we never go from what should happen to the lesbians. It's just what should happen to that couple. Um, so. We really stopped thinking of them as a gay couple and just thought of them as a couple. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then I would, I guess I would ask playing devil's advocate here. Uh-huh. Maybe you you should have thought of them as <laughs> the lesbian couple because uh-huh. obviously a lot of people look up to them as um, as as some kind of role models, you know. And right. what is your responsibility as writers to these fans? Well, I think we would be shirking the responsibility if um, Willow then goes out and gets herself a boy. Um, yeah. <laughs> then that seems to me that we have said something about lesbianness. Um, <laughs> what we have said instead are we view our characters as such real and three-dimensional characters that good things can happen to them, bad things can happen to them. They aren't templates anymore. These are people. Mm-hmm. We okay. hope we've created people. Okay. I like that. They and like templates. obviously um, a lot of people want to know uh, a lot of the, the backlash. A lot of people are going to be tuning out from here on out because mm-hmm. of what has happened. Although mm-hmm. people say that, you know, I, I defy that they, didn't, that they didn't watch the season finale. Yeah, I, I Come on. people always say they're not going to watch anymore, and our numbers stay exactly the same. I mean, well, people, but they've gone down also. Um, uh, I yeah, but our, our boy numbers went up. You know, you yeah. if you you can man, you can look at the numbers any which way, okay. and um, um, we're, we're also you know season six of a long running show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, fans have gone away to college. I didn't watch TV when I was in college. You know, um, you don't know what that's about. Um, and we certainly feel we did a really bang up season. So okay, um, so that is the general consensus. Oh yeah, there. we we really liked the season. We feel we did a really good job. Um, I mean, gosh, just look at the musical alone. But I mean, <laughs> I mean if you t- even if you took the musical out, I think it's a really strong season. It's it's um, a very different season than yeah. you guys have done before. Yeah, and and next season's going to be completely different from that. We're going to go in a whole different way next year. Oh, what way is that? Um, we're sort of looping around at the beginning. It's going to be. Um, more funny, more standalones. Um, you know, I like the stand. Yeah. You know, I remember last year when you were in to talk to us, and we asked you about this coming season, season yeah. six. 
and you said there's going to be much more funny, much more drama. Uh, we got much more, drama. much more drama. We did not get the much more funny. No. That's true. Yeah, because because you didn't true. write enough episodes. <laughs> right, that's right. That now we know be. why. Because I remember that quote very no, uh, that's specifically because I'm like, great, I love the funny. You know, I'm Well, maybe big... I meant, mm, you know, there's a lot more funny to come. Not that it would be more funny than we previously seen. <laughs> You know, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> um, but episodes about food. See, there you go. Fun. Yeah, no, I'm 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 distressed to hear that people are saying they won't keep watching because, um, what does that say that? I mean, Tara wasn't our only gay character. Um, Willow's still going to be around, being a really good role model, dealing dealing with grief and moving on, and um, I'm sure eventually she'll date and. Um, we 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 didn't kill lesbianosity. We we killed one 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 lonely girl who we feel who we happened missed to too, who happened to be gay, and we 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 miss her terribly. And uh, there is no reason to not think that we won't be seeing a little or more of Tara or something that looks like Tara. <laughs> See, I knew it. Like <laughs> she is picking and choosing her words yeah. so care. You should see, see her the concentration. <laughs> it was just see, just like Twin Peaks when you know when what's her face dies when um Laura Laura La, what Laura Laura, Laura Palmer, Palmer dies uh-huh. and then she comes back as her cousin right with the dark hair right <laughs> yeah um um if if people I don't know if people are exactly why people will say they're tuning out but if they are tuning out because they miss Amber Benson. Yeah. <laughs> well said. Yes. Well said. Wait, I want to ask this. Will, I really quick, we have to take Will break. Willow, and I'm sure, but you could just sort of hint to what's going to happen next season. Obviously, she's going to have to deal with the fact that she killed a human. Oh, p- yes, please, let's deal with this. Yes. 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 That she filleted a human. That she went, wow, and his skin came off. Right. I mean, so that that's obvious. I mean... Yes, she, she will be... She will. I know you can't tell us this, but I feel like I just need to just get it out. Is she going to go to jail? I mean, how's this going to work? Um, no, she doesn't go to jail. Um, um, Spike goes, it never happened. Just trust me. <laughs> she is She is somewhere interesting when we open next season. She is up in a place doing a thing with somebody. Up in with a somebody that we know. What the <laughs> hell is going on? She was Cordy because I said to myself, you know what? Where was Cordy, Miss Higher Power, when the world was going to end? Again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break. Oh, go my back. God. We're going to talk more about that. Jane's evil. <laughs> we always say Joss is evil. It's Jane. It's yeah. really Jane. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a request also. And this is for Lisa in the U.K., and this is dedicated to all the U.K. listeners. It's like 1 a.m. over there yeah, right now. Yeah, we're up fighting the good fight. <laughs> uh, so Xander and Dawn had, had, were sort of in a situation where those are our last two damsels. Um, the problem is everybody hates a damsel. Mm-hmm. Um, you resent the damsel for always getting themselves in trouble. Um, so... What do you do when you, when you realize that and you go, okay, Xander saves the world and Dawn has a sword? Okay, now we're fresh out of damsel. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, you get creative and you um, you think in new ways. You know what it does also? It takes you back to standalone episodes, though, where the damsels are non-cast members. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's always a possibility. That's a good observation. Yeah. And, I, I really we have to take a break real quick. Okay, but I just want to ask this really quick. So Willow <laughs> uh-huh. is fighting against Buffy. We know Willow has this new power. And right. so John and I are watching this, and we're like, okay, Willow, you know, she's pretty powerful. But Buffy knows how to fight. I mean, right. Buffy's like a martial arts expert. Right. But Willow, she doesn't know how to do that. Well, she's been participating in Scooby fights and helping train Buffy Yeah, but the thing she was doing last years. night, <laughs> um, she must have gotten that from Rack or from Child or even, something. Even uh, even Dawn had a very smooth move just from observing. That's true. It's amazing what you can get from observing. Yes. Yeah, well, that's true. It is true. It is true. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk more about um, the episodes and uh, what's going on and more interesting things that we'll <laughs> maybe try to get out of Jane for next season. We'll see, we'll see if we can catch we'll our We'll squeeze cards. as much as we can. Okay, this song is from last night's episode. Uh, we want to thank uh, the people that promptly uh, let us know and send us the MP3 so we can have it. I got the MP3. They sent me the information. I got okay. it. I illegally downloaded it and burned it to a CD just for you guys. <laughs> thank you. All right. From, from last night's law, episode, Grave, this is Sarah McLaughlin with Prayer of St. Francis. I know, it was longer last night on the show. Yeah, that's weird. All right, um, that was Sam McLaughlin doing Prayer for St. Francis. That's from Grave, uh, 6.22. And that's for everyone out there who watched last night's episode. Um, 
We're back, obviously, for listening <laughs> to the Succubus Club on KLBC.org. And I'm Kitty, that's Candy, and that's Jane Espenson. And we're just, we're just hanging out. We're eating goldfish, we're drinking water, and we're talking. <laughs> talking about some stuff. Um, talking about Buffy and Firefly and Angel, and we're trying to trick Jane into giving us some, some stuff, you know. <laughs> we're not tricking her. <laughs> we're trying to catch her off guard, see if she'll give us any information. No, no. Uh, <laughs> but you, let's mention really quick what we were just talking about, which is Joss's uh, involvement. Obviously, this season, only one episode, uh, a big episode, huge right. episode. And he was busy doing Firefly, yes. the pilot, um, and directing the pilot as well, and that's why he couldn't do the finale this year. Um, but you did mention about the first episode for next yes. season? we have broken the first episode for next season, and Buffy. my understanding is, yeah, Buffy, my understanding is that Joss will be writing that himself. Awesome. And um, he has written not only the two-hour, a two-hour Firefly event, but also a one, another one-hour um, episode for Firefly, so... Uh, everyone should tune in and check out the fancy new show. I'm going to tune in. Mega Joss. And Angel yeah. as well, you said? And Angel, yes. I think he's going to be more involved in uh, in Angel next year. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. And you are going to do Firefly and I'm Buffy. I'm going to do Firefly and Buffy. And maybe Angel. If they would like me to, I am there. <laughs> well, tell them we said that we want you to write okay. Angel. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, now, I'll, I'll well now it's sealed. Now, of course, well, I'm Well, seriously, I was going to say tell Tim Maneer, but... That won't work. That won't work. He's not an angel anymore. That's right. Well, tell him the phrase. He's off. But he's still consulting on angels. Oh, see, tell him. Tell yeah. him the girls from the Succubus Club say, I should write for you guys. Okay. <laughs> He'll listen. Because that'll work. <laughs> Apparently. He'll listen. He's scared of him. <laughs> well, who's not, really? <laughs> oh, oh, goodness. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I want to know more about... Well, go ahead and ask. Stuff. <laughs> You've got the questions. You, okay, fine. <laughs> I asked my thing about Willow. But that was your thing? That was your only, that's the only thing you wanted to know? You no, know what I, I liked about last night's episode? Uh, one particular scene was her, and I know it has to be intentional, was her uh, digging out of the hole Absolutely um, intentional. at the end. <laughs> yep, bringing it back around to the beginning. Absolutely. Hand comes out of the grave. Ha- you know, hence the title, I would think, Grave. Kind right. Of, yeah. Right. Right. Revisit it. That, I just really liked that. I thought that was yeah, a really worked, nice moment. Nice I'm like, oh. Okay, I want to know about Willow's hair. This is a really superficial moment. But <laughs> her hair, okay, so her hair turns black and then turns right. back to red. Now, would you, did you guys dye her hair? No, it was a wig. It was a very, oh, that was very really good, good wig. wig. Very yeah, nice. I know. I was, sitting, I was sitting as close to her as I am to you guys, looking at her hair, going, wow, they dyed your hair. And she said, no, it's a wig. Duh. And you could see, like, little hairs coming out of her head. I don't know how they did it. Because um, I was, I mean, she had some close-ups, and I'm like, damn, they dyed her hair. Yeah. Now, she was really uncomfortable because they had to put the wig on really, really tight. Yeah. She had really tight yeah. pins. Plus, she had those enormous black contact lenses that cover your whole eyes. Could she even Plus, see she, out of them? No, she, well, she could see kind of, but it was more that they were very hard, painful to put in if you have sensitive eyes. Yeah. I mean, I can't wear regular contacts. Me neither. Me neither. And, then, um, and then she was out on that bluff overlooking the ocean, and they had sort of scattered um, scattered charred earth around there, um, you know, with the effect of her, her blasts. And the wind was blowing really hard, so it was blowing all this dirt in her eyes. Oh. So, you know, there's actually... Um, you can, you know, see that her eyes are almost all the way closed. She's trying to keep the dirt out of them. Wait, I, it, was Sunnydale always on the coast? <laughs> ah. Well, John goes, if, if you need something in the script, it becomes a I bigger and bigger town. I know, I love it, because John goes, since when is Sunnydale on the coast? I go, has it always been? They remember they when, been to the uh, beach Angel? in, in uh, yes. Dracula. And they went to the beach in the one with the sort of creature from the Black Lagoon. There you go, go fish. Scene. You're right. That's but uh, that true, could have been true. a field trip to a nearby beach. Yep. Um, yeah. And uh, they go to the waterfront when Angel's going to get out of town on a ship. They're just, they're just down that's at the true, waterfront. That's true, the docks. That's docks. true, there are docks. Yeah. And I remember when that aired, they're like, well, since when are there docks? <laughs> well, for a long time, we also have an international airport and uh, like a Magic Mountain it's yeah. size theme park. It has expanded since a one Starbucks <laughs> town in the pilot. Right. I love that. Well, Sunnydale cool. is is really building on itself. You know, it, it absolutely, absolutely. It, what we figure we figure it's near Santa Barbara. So that's, that's right. That's, yeah. well, that's coast. Okay. Yeah. And that's why the Chumash Indian would, of course, be the correct oh. Indian tribe oh. for the region. There you go. Yeah. Uh-huh. See, it all fits. It all fits. It all fits. Somehow it does. <laughs> um, okay, this is actually a really good question. I'm, I'm interested about this. Somebody wants to know, uh, the uh, the Mutant Enemy uh, company, all, all the members, are, are really fantastic as far as interacting with the fans, yes. um, as evident by so many of the writers willing, oh, thank you, willing to do a little internet show <laughs> like the Succubus Club. She just said, and great, which thank you very much. Um, and posting on the bronze, et cetera, and other message boards. How do you feel 
when sometimes it gets too complicated, do, or does it get too complicated? And is it harder when the fans are so hard on the show and they transfer their anger to you, the writers? It, that is hard. Um, I think a lot of us were more interactive when we first get the job. Yeah. If you'll notice, it's always the new writers. They're yeah. like, oh, I'll go mm. on the posting board. I'll yeah. interact with the fans. And um, it does get it it does get tiring because you bond with the show so much, and even if a decision isn't yours, you have to take the responsibility for it and defend it. Um, and I think that's really important. Um, and so you're put in this position of having to defend things that, if you were a fan, maybe you wouldn't. I, I don't know. I and and people. And also sometimes it's embarrassing because people remember the episodes better than you do, and you just feel <laughs> like, huh? weird that I, I wrote that and I don't remember that moment, yeah. or I can't remember why it was important. Um, and that that makes it a little bit of a strain sometimes. Um, and and but other than that, I mean, we go to the posting board party. We always all have a blast. Mm-hmm. The fans are very kind uh, and very smart. Um, I mean, if this this Tara thing is is probably going to be really hard on us because. You do find yourself getting defensive and feeling misunderstood, and um, yeah, it, yeah, it can be tough. It was interesting that that you brought up the fact that you may disagree or may not like or something something that happens in the script, but you find yourself having to defend it. Mm-hmm. Um, when Dave Fury was in here last week, we asked him about that because he has some very different points of view about certain characters and, and stories, and he's he's not shy about it. He he told us as much. And yet, he, it's still his job to write the script as he's right. been told to. Um, and we asked how difficult that was for him. Is it is that much of a problem for you, or do you much less than it is for Fury? Fury um, has very very strong independent ideas about about where things should go, and I tend to be much more um, what Joss's word defines the universe. When we hear <laughs> Joss's word, we know what the right answer is. Um, um, so it, it, it does differ for the two of us. We're probably the two most extreme. Yeah. He is the most likely to disagree. I'm the most likely to hop on board. Um, <laughs> um, so it is a different experience for both of us. Um, I tend to pretty much love everything we've done. <laughs> has there been anything, though, that you maybe you're like, eh, maybe that's there, there really There has been. There are very few. Um, there are just a few lines, and I won't, I won't, I don't even want to say what they are because right. you know they belong to specific authors and stuff. Understandable. Okay, here's one. Here's one I can. <laughs> okay, I, I can cite this one. Okay. There was a thing that was cut from, oh, my episode where Buffy sleeps with the guy in college. She sleeps with Parker. Parker. Sex. Parker. Sex. Yeah. Yes. Harsh, um, was that? No, no, that. It's harsh light of day. Harsh, harsh light of day. Thank you. <laughs> my pleasure. Um, <laughs> where at the very end. All, all the fans were very upset. They were like, "This didn't feel like Buffy. Why would Buffy get so hung up on this guy I making said her a same slut?" Thing. Yeah, and you know, I said, "I don't see a problem." <laughs> <laughs> and you know, particularly lines at the end about maybe we can still get back together. Maybe, maybe if I try harder. And people thought that was very, very weak of her. What they didn't see was a bit that had gotten cut where she says. The whole time I was with Parker, I kept thinking, look at me. I'm doing something that doesn't have to do with Angel. Look at how this has nothing to do with Angel. Oh, my God. How come I couldn't see it was all about Angel? Oh. And and that got cut, and I think that was a mistake. That's Um, too bad. Yeah. Dealing with the cuts and drop scenes and stuff like that must be a little difficult because, and which is great about the DVDs that they can include some stuff. Right, but I don't think that would be included because, you know, that was not... Even shot. Yeah, well, it was shot. Oh, it was shot. It was shot and it was in a a version, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't, but it got, it was like six minutes too long. It was way too long, so stuff was taken out. And I know how hard that is because, you know, when I was in college, you know, I did journalism and stuff and we'd, we'd write stuff and then the editor would say, okay, you have to cut this down, you know, from 100 inches to 30 and you're like... Uh, it's my work, and I can't right. bear to cut anything out of it. Mm-hmm. That was, I mean, you must be. It must be the same, especially for this. Yeah. One, it's such an impact. Yeah, and particularly if it's if it's being cut after it's written, where you don't even get the say necessarily about what gets cut out, um, that it can be tough. Um, so like that was one where I felt like I I had to defend Buffy's Buffy's decision to do what she did with Parker, and yet I felt that the why she did it had been lost. Um, that was one, um, but every now and then there'll be yeah. some joke where I, go, I don't think that joke's as strong as it should be. Or I don't, I don't, I think Anya wouldn't 
say that or whatever, you know. So there's never been a, a large story or a plot that, or a story turn that you've maybe said? There have been some where I've been skeptical. Yeah. The, the attempted rape, I was like, I don't know right. if we want to hurt hurt this character of Spike that much. But then when I saw it, I was, and, and you see his face and you see what mm-hmm. follows and then you kind of go, okay, I, I, I can groove with that. I, right. That is, that is in fact, very interesting. Have there have there been part things where you thought weren't going to work at all, and then you're like, wow, that was. Oh great. yeah, yeah, absolutely. That must be a great feeling. Yeah, because you, you sometimes you go, oh, this can never work, and then you see it, and it does work, and it's it's tremendous relief. That's great. Yeah. Um, back to the the rape scene. Actually, somebody did want to ask a specific question about it. Uh, could you shed some? Oh, it sounds Did like you hear that? Yeah, I can hear aircraft that. Aircraft or that. <laughs> I know somebody's coming. Uh. <laughs> uh, could you shed some light on exactly how the Buffy Spike attempted rape scene in Seeing Red was supposed to be interpreted? I'm getting confused. Is this a case of no means yes, that it was okay because Buffy had said no and didn't mean it before? Because that is how it came off to me. Why does she shrug it off so seemingly quickly to the point where she was willing to trust Spike with protecting Dawn in the very next episode and even missing him? Yeah... The missing him is problematic. Um, it was not supposed to be in, uh, in no way, and I don't. I think I felt it was very clear that in no way was Spike doing condoned in yeah. any way. It was she. She was you know clearly shaken, very upset, right. clearly saying no, and he was clearly appalled by what he had done. He clearly didn't yeah. think it had been condoned, or he would not have had his own reaction to it. Absolutely. Um, she protect him with Dawn because he has, she has no reason not to protect him with Dawn. He he did not. He was. Buffy knows him. Buffy spent a lot of time with him. She knows he's evil. She knows he surprised her with the rape. She did not know he was capable of that. But she has no reason to think that he would attack Dawn. And it was a dire situation. Right. With very few choices about what to do with Dawn. Right. Uh, and the missing him, that's tough. That's is very tough. It's very tough. I think what we could say is that she's missing the man he could have been. She's missing the potential. The yeah, the potential. And when someone bet- reveals themselves to be not what you thought they were, mm-hmm. you miss who you thought they were. Right. And I think she was missing the spike that she thought she knew. At the same time, it says a lot about yourself, your judgment of somebody. If you're expecting one thing from somebody and they disappoint you in any way, right. it's true. it does say a lot about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, tend not to see it that way. We tend to go, oh, they did this thing. Yeah. No, I mi- misinterpreted that. Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to take another quick break. Before this next song, about that last song, the song at the end of last night's episode, do you know who picked that out or how that worked out? I'm because not it was sure. a great song to end the episode. Yeah, I think it was a different song than we saw in the early versions oh, really? that we got from the editor. I think it was a different song, but I'm not, can't, can't, uh, can't swear. Okay. So you're not sure. Not sure. <laughs> not know, sure. Don't know a thing. Okay. But it's a great song. Great, great way to, you, you can always count on a musical montage by Sarah McLachlan to make me cry. I know. Excellent. <laughs> Which is how it I know, works. I'm like, I'm totally crying and John's like, don't cry. He's like making fun of me. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> shut up, you're you. You're just a girl, man. I know. You're just a Okay, we're going to take a break. Girl. What's the song? Yeah. Take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about this stuff and, and get wrapped up, because Jane's kind of got to head on out. <laughs> um, this is uh, from Smashed, and this is Roxy Music doing album. Welcome back to the Succubus Club on KLBC.org, your truly underground radio station. And that's Roxy Music doing Avalon from Smash 6.9. I'm Kitty. That's Kenny. That's producer Ethan. Producer, <laughs> producer Ethan. The one with no mic. <laughs> and that's Jane has said. Yay. Yay. <laughs> and we're just hanging out. We're talking about um, all kinds of stuff. We're talking about last night's episodes. We're talking about new episodes to come. You know, new things. She's to not come. spilling a lot. No, she's not no. spilling a lot, but she's given us some good stuff to think about. Um, we're talking about various different things. So um, she's here till seven. So we've got about a half hour <laughs> left with Jane. We'll still be here till eight. But so you can all tune out after. Yeah, you can tune out. <laughs> okay. But li- but stay tuned because Candy and I have some announcements. Big announcements to make. Absolutely. And Jane and I were just talking about Vegas, and that's kind of one of our announcements. Uh-huh. So we'll get to that later. Yes. Um, we just got a phone call and a question for you. Uh, Hi, Fenric. <laughs> very specifically about last night's show, if mm-hmm. you if you can answer. Uh, the Christ illusion in Xander in, in the very end of the episode. Wants to, he wants to know if it was 
you oh, God, specifically? Oh, no. God, no, no. Just because, <laughs> because he loves his childhood friend is different than uh, he loves the world. <laughs> this, is, this is just an expression of, okay. of a human connection between two people. You're right, because he wouldn't have done that if it wasn't like Buffy or, 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 um, or Willow. And he wasn't... He, Maybe not. He wasn't... If he if she had killed him, that wouldn't have saved the world. So it wasn't like That's he gave true. his life to save the world. He was willing to give his life because he didn't want to live in a world that didn't have her in it. Right. I think it's very different. Yeah. yeah. I love that scene. I can't even express how much I love that he, he was the one. Me too. Yeah. Because a lot of times, I, and I know over the last two seasons, we were kind of like, where's the Scooby love? Where's the Scooby love? You know, because they broke apart in season four and even uh, season five, they kind of came back. It's just kind of been sketchy, and so it's always nice to see them yeah, isn't as that friends. Lovely. It's yeah. really nice. Especially since I just saw um, the Yoko Factor on on FX the other night. Oh, and right. That, fighting and that's just right. all of that stuff. And it reminded me of, like, what a bastard Spike was, you know. <laughs> God, man, you know. But, you know, we haven't really talked about Giles for a lot, right? Let's talk that's about him. Oh, and uh, as you mentioned, you were going to bring him back earlier in the season, but right. chose to... Uh, yeah, we were talking about having him be a guest at uh, Xander and Anya's wedding, but we decided that the impact of seeing him after a longer absence would be greater. So you knew that he was going to come for this episode? Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, we always knew. Two to go. We always knew he'd be back for this. Um, and uh, oh, I, something that got cut from um, the wedding episode we were talking about oh, during yes, the break yes. was that there was a reference to Giles in that episode. If any of you are wondering why he wouldn't come back for Xander's wedding, um, he wasn't able to make it, but he sent all those flowers, Aww. all the flowers in that church. It was, it was, this, it was actually shot, this rev- but it got cut for length. Of um, course, as everything does. As everything does. Um, and it was explained that Xander and Anya wouldn't have been able to afford flowers. They were going to have no flowers at their wedding, but Giles sent all those flowers from England. Well, I guess he didn't. Anyway, he, <laughs> he, he paid for them. from England. Yes. yes. So now yeah. you all know every time you watch the episode, the all the flowers are all those flowers are from Giles. Yes. That's cool. Um, uh, Do we have Giles questions? Or? No, nobody sent Giles. Okay, because I was, and I, we were talking about this earlier, how I was completely unspoiled that Giles was going to show up. And I just thought that was such a great... I, maybe I'm the only one who just didn't really think of it. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, Giles. And it was so great yeah. to see him. But then there was that fear that he might die. Yeah. That, was the, that wasn't nice. We <laughs> thought it was very plausible. We felt it would be very plausible that Giles might die. So we knew y'all would fall for it. I mean, seriously, I thought that Anya was going to die. <laughs> and I thought she's going to die. You're a sucker, man. I'm, <laughs> a sucker. I'm like, okay, Anya's going to die. Okay, no, she's not going to die. Um, uh, Jonathan and Andrew look like they're going to die. Jonathan and Andrew, die. for sure. I, I'm going, oh, they're going to die. Okay, guess not. Um, <laughs> I definitely thought, um, you know, Don, possibly. Okay, guess not. And Giles. And I'm going, oh, now here's the one. This is it. <laughs> what, what are the, what's the situation with Ripper, with him possibly coming back next season? What, what's up with all that? I think we will have some Giles next season on Buffy. Okay. Um, Ripper, I have no idea. Uh, I know Joss was working on an outline for it. Uh, but then Firefly got all hot and hairy, and so I have not heard anything for a while about Ripper. And that's why I was thinking that Giles can't die because what about Ripper? I'm like, well, what about the show? What are they gonna? They can't kill him off. But I still got nervous. Yeah, that was the only time I, because unfortunately I was spoiled, and I didn't mean to be. Unfortunately, people sending questions for you guys, and they've already seen the episode, so I have to read the questions. And like when Giles comes back, you're like, oh, I'm like, huh? <laughs> it's, and it's, 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 it's just a stunning moment when when something throws Willow back, and you look up, and there's Giles, and there's no glasses. And he <laughs> that's right. That he makes him badass. John <laughs> specifically said no glasses for Giles this episode, and he looks so determined and so sexy. Yeah. Oh yes. Yep. I was just like. Oh my God! It's Giles, and he just looks amazing. And, and then, let me ask the audience: How many of you think that Anya should get together with Giles? Yeah, I, you know, <laughs> I will say this much: I wouldn't be surprised if if that happened because obviously you guys tested the waters with <laughs> the tabula rasa. That was testing the waters suggests that we have some sort of okay, plan. maybe not. <laughs> um, but we, in, we played with the notion. Okay, <laughs> okay, and it worked well. They were great together, and they have great chemistry as as actors. As, as characters, I think it's it's a little harder to grasp, but it's still <laughs> kind of cool because she's not really uh, too young. I mean, she's been no, around. she's eleven hundred years old. She's, well, there's she's, that. She's twice his age. <laughs> <laughs> twice. <laughs> but what about Xander? I mean, would do you think that that Giles would feel comfortable doing something like that, or would well, it not matter? I, I gosh. Well, let's see. In the alternate she's universe, she's going all hypothetical. Yes. Um, 
I think it would be interesting. I think it is better to have a romance with obstacles in its way than one that has none. That's true. Yeah. Those are boring. The ones with no obstacles. That's true. You're right. That, Th- those are Riley Buffy things that's right. that going on sure. there. That's right. Which don't, isn't everybody glad that Sandra and Anya didn't get married? They're much more interesting. Absolutely. And I, I love that scene where by the by the cash register last night where he. It was just a very honest scene between the two yeah. of them, which they haven't really had. You know, she's been angry. He's been, you know, preoccupied with everything that else that's going on and trying to apologize. But there's never been a real honest conversation between the two of them about, about this since it happened. That was that was probably the hardest scene in that episode. I remember that that got a lot of writing and scrutiny and rewriting. And, and um, I remember that being very hard. I, did, I was not involved in the writing in that scene, but I loved how it turned out. Yeah. Do yeah. any of the DVDs like have, and I know they have cut scenes or they have stuff that behind the scenes. And commentary like, as well. Do they like Buffy bloopers? Uh, we certainly see gag reels every year at the uh, rap party. I don't know if any of those have been. I mean, so many of them are so inside, they wouldn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> I would just crack up to see some of those. Can you imagine, like, Buffy, like, getting in the face of some demon and or one of them cracking up? and just It like, happens. I mean, oh, I, yeah. I've, be, I've seen it. I would love to see it. I just think that would be really funny just to yeah. be able to watch that. Because you guys obviously get to see this stuff all the time. Yeah, you it's know. true. It's true. We I mean, see we see a lot more when they mess up than ones where they... Because I, can nev- I can't imagine that them, like, did, were there any times during the, the filming of this episode the Willow was just evil and then just cracked up? I mean, um, There were a lot of times where she would sort of crumple in pain from the contact oh. lenses. <laughs> they weren't so funny, though. That wasn't funny. <laughs> oh, poor. Yeah. Um, well, anytime, every time someone, the director says cut, you see the character fall away and the actress in there. That's yeah. always interesting, yeah. um, is to sort of see... Whatever emotion is happening, slide away. Well. Yeah. <laughs> so the cast for next season is exactly the same as this season? Um, well, Tara won't be back, at least not. Well, <laughs> I'm in the credits, aside from the one that she died in. Yeah, I believe that's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, new, no new people? No, 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 no one oh, taken well, away yet? There are going to be new recurring characters, but I don't believe there will be any new regular characters. Can you tell us anything about these new recurring uh, characters? I wouldn't be surprised to see a high school principal, a new, new, new high school principal. Oh, for principal. Dawn in high wait, school. Wait, yeah, where, is, where were all those people that went to Sunnydale High? Where'd they go? They were sent to schools in na- neighboring communities. <laughs> they, yeah. were in, they were in Shelbyville. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> by, sitting by the lemon tree? Uh-huh. <laughs> That's right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, did, so is there going to be a new Sunnydale High? Are they going to be rebuilt? Or is this gonna be new They've been rebuilding Sunnydale High for a while. Oh, actually, they're rebuilding it as we speak. They're rebuilding it this summer. Uh, okay, in not? Sunnydale right now, they're uh, rebuilding you know, the high So school. when October comes around, September, October, it'll be. It clear. might be done. I bet, I bet Xander's construction company is in on that. Maybe. Oh, he should certainly get in touch with them because it sounds like there should be some job opportunities. I'm thinking yeah. that. Yeah. He, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so a new principal. I was like, Snyder? Oh, no, he got eaten. Snyder's all eaten up. But he was on, what was I watching? He was on a show the other night, I so. saw. Hey. I don't know, some show. Uh, oh, um, uh, Boston Public. Oh, yeah, with my friend judge. Armin. I yeah. love Armin. He's great. I was like, yeah. oh, my God, it's Principal Snyder. I love him. <laughs> Somebody wants to know about Anya since we were just uh, talking mm-hmm. about her. In the interview uh, with David Fury here last week, he spoke of Spike not having a moral compass. How could how, how he could not atone for his past without a soul? What if Anya, she has not shown any remorse for a thousand years as a vengeance demon yet, everyone, especially Xander, seems to have forgotten her past. We, the audience, cannot even be sure that she even has a soul or that Dawn has one for that matter. Good question. Oh, yeah, interesting question. Uh, I believe Anya does have a soul. As uh, a vengeance demon? Yes. Okay. I. Er, well, maybe she has to have some sort of heart to, to care <laughs> it's enough hard, isn't it? to, you know, to well, care enough about the plight of the people she has to help. Would you say that um, um, <laughs> Lauren, the host on Angel, doesn't have a soul? I'm with you oh. on this because good I think boy. it's very difficult for... There's no black and white where demons are concerned. That's right. There are good demons and bad demons. They balance each other out. Right. She does I mean, a Clem. service. Clem. Yeah, I good demon. Clem doesn't have a soul. And it's not like vengeance... Vengeance isn't just random evil. Mm. Vengeance is... is uh, Remember what Hallie said. We prefer justice demon. Ah, that's yeah. true. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Um, they may be part of the equalizing team that the powers that be have out there working. So I, I don't think the fact that um, Anya happens to have demon means that she is soulless. 
Interesting. Um, yeah. But do you think when she was literally on Yonka, you know, back in The Wish and, and all that, that she did, did she have a soul then? Yeah, I think she did. Okay. It's just touchy. It's so touchy going back and forth. And especially when you throw somebody like Spike in the mix, who's somebody who doesn't have a soul, who can't hurt people but still does some good things, does some bad things. You know, it just mixes everything together. Well, it makes it hard for people to understand where the stance is from the writing team. It is true. Um, but I think it's part of what makes the show interesting and real and true is that as you get to know the character, when you first meet a character, um, they are the thing that they are. This is our vengeance team, and all vengeance teams are like them. This is a vampire. All vampires are like them. They are categories. As you get to know them, just like in real life when you get to know people, you discover how much more complex they are, which is one of the reasons why I think people who say you killed a lesbian are not giving her enough credit for being a person first. Uh, we ki- we killed a person, goddamn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe they're upset about that. No, I mean, I mean, really. I mean, maybe they're just upset also that Tara's yes. gone. It is very, it is very sad that Tara's gone. I absolutely understand, and I even understand the taking a step back and saying, "Do you realize what you did? You killed a lesbian." But right. I also think it discredits her a little bit to suggest that she is, she is nothing more than that label. She is so much more, uh, she is so much more a person mm-hmm. than she is a label. That I think. Um, even as we debate the politics of of killing her, gosh, you know, if if <laughs> it was certainly, I don't know, if you did if you did the you know the Matthew Shepard story, mm-hmm. you're killing a gay person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you, the, it, if you do a, a, a movie, if you do Schindler's List, oh my goodness, he killed Spielberg killed many many Jews. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Brutally. Yes. <yeah. laughs> Uh, it, it is. It is. Are you tricky. offended? <laughs> I cried through the whole movie. <laughs> Spielbergo. Damn that Spielbergo. <laughs> it is. It is a tricky situation, and I don't want to make light of anybody's right. anger and angst. Um, but I think that it is interesting that we do make our characters very fully faceted. Um, be they lesbian, be they demon, be they whatever. Um, we like to think that they become people with so much texture and so much reality that. That's what becomes important about them, as opposed to whether or not they happen to write write demon on their college application. Right, and the thing was when when you look at Adam Adam Bush, you know, when you look at jo- huh? Sorry, Warren. I'm like, <laughs> what? Are, when you look at Warren's character, I mean, yeah, people might have been like, oh my God, I can't believe Willow skinned him and killed him and everything. But no one really. I mean, I'm sure people were sorry to see him go, but I don't think anyone was like that bum because he was horrible. Yeah, which mean, mean horrible evil guy. Um. Yes, it's true. Um, and and um, maybe he was gay. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> oh, don't start. <laughs> you get yourself in trouble now. He was certainly leading poor Andrew. Along. I know, poor yeah. Andrew. <laughs> we like have be, to I like a, being given, given orders. <laughs> oh, wasn't that do. the sweetest thing? Uh, don't you just love That one when he's ba- you like begging him to, to, to take over. I'll let you take over. Oh. And what, what, when he goes, what, but much? He goes, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> okay. What he, no, he said, um, he said, like gut reaction or something like that. Force to have it. Force to have it. Oh, yeah. 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 Ouch. Okay. Um, Even new. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take our final break with Jane here when we come back. I want to talk actually about Buffy, oddly enough. Yeah. Um, okay. Being the main character and all. Yeah. And uh, let's change a song. It's the other song by this group. I don't have the other one. So. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, so come back. Come back. We'll be back with Jane. And this is super fine doing um, I Already Met You. And I was saying, okay. you know what, you guys? If you do that, I'm telling you right now, I'm not on board. Now, so if they come after you and they try to come after me and fire me, <laughs> I'm going to say, I strictly forbid you and you guys are on your own. You're swimming upstream on your own. Welcome so, to the middle of a conversation yeah, as, as we come back. Yes, to the Succubus Club on KLBC.org, your truly underground radio station. That was super fun doing I Already Met You. And you can get that on the Buffy soundtrack. And that's from Teacher's Pet 1.4. And um, this is Kitty. That's Candy over there. Hi, how you doing? That's Jane Espenson. Hello. And, and that's uh, producer Ethan. And speaking of Teacher's Pets, I want to say hi to Richard. Oh, <laughs> that was good. That was good. <laughs> Richard, my student. Queen of the segue over here. She's doing it better than we are, man. <laughs> and right about now, Richard's going, I'm not the Teacher's Pet. <laughs> he's not. He's so not. But he's a very good writer. Oh, very good. There you go. Yeah. Wow, okay, great. Kick ass. Okay, right, we are back. It's a quarter to seven, so we got about 15, 15 minutes. or so minutes with yeah. Jane. 
after that, after Jane uh, leaves, we will be making we'll a few announcements, her. and yeah. we will give a more detailed kind of review of what we thought of last yeah. night's show and of Angel's uh, season finale last Monday night, uh, entitled Tomorrow. Um, we wanted to talk more about Buffy, actually. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this was a very dark season for her, one that she had to come through, um, go through the crap to get to a better place, which I think most young women, I think, can somewhat relate to. I, I know I could, and that's why I like this season. I know that there's a lot of people out there who maybe didn't like it because they couldn't really identify with that, and mm-hmm. at least I'm assuming as much because I thought a lot of it rang very true. Mm-hmm. Metaphorically speaking, yes. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, but now that she's in this this better place and she wants to take grasp of this world and, and show Dawn what it's all about and mm-hmm. she's all happy, so sunny. And <laughs> all right. Sorry. No singing, remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry. What, it, what does this mean for her um, for next season? I mean, you said before we're going to see more of season one type of back to the beginning. In well, I mean, Buffy really embraced a role at the end of, um, the the finale where she sort of said, "I will show you the world." She she uh, as if she were in Aladdin. She said those <laughs> very words um, and uh, sort of embraced the role of mentor. And I think we will see we will see that next year. We will see what that means. To Dawn. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> somebody you to tell us or other people's or other people's <laughs> <laughs> and or other people's and like <laughs> she's gonna <laughs> open she's gonna open a how to be a slayer workshop apparently. so she's gonna change the button that says i'm a slayer ask me how yeah <laughs> well, she's, gonna wear it. she's gonna wear it right. Right. and people will ask and i have one yeah. of those i do too i made one i know <laughs> <laughs> Um, what were we supposed to take um, necessarily from the Spike and Buffy relationship, uh, from Buffy's point of view? I mean, what did she learn from that? What did, because you're spo- I would assume you'd want to do that for a purpose. It, something was supposed to come out of it. What came out of it for for Buffy? What did she learn from that relationship specifically? Um, it's an interesting question. Thank you. Because uh, if you suggest that she had, if you, if you suggest that she had mistakes and she learned. That she made mistakes and she learned about them and how not to do them. Uh-huh. Then you then you are in danger of implying that she deserved what she got because she made mistakes with him uh-huh. and then he attacked her, which oh, is of course not the not case. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, um, with that caveat, though, I do think that she did not. Um, she Spike was not the only. Mm, <laughs> boy, it's a it's a minefield. <laughs> um, I think Buffy learned that there are big chunks of Buffy that she didn't know were there. That she's the in love with the dark or in love with misery, in love with pain, whatever it is, there was something in her that was able to respond to soulless spike and she did not know she was she was not aware she was capable of that. Um, I think that's that's what I found very interesting. Was Dish. Buffy sort of going, Oh, I don't I I'm not who I thought I was and her feeling that she had to hide that and then realizing she didn't, that her friends could accept it. Okay. okay. That was I thought, very cool and very positive. Because she was afraid all, all season long of, mm-hmm. of them finding out. That's right. And I think one of the most interesting parts of last night's show was the fact that she tells Giles this. Point right. blank. Point yeah. blank. And there's no pointing fingers or wagging yes. fingers. There's no blaming. He simply laughs. Now, the laughing is obviously about you know, all of the things that have happened. But the fact right. is he didn't point that out. That's right. And tell her what a bad person she was for doing it. Or give her that That's look. Or give her approval. Exactly. Yeah. Right. He was. He treats her like a grown up now, which yeah. is which is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, I really like where their relationship is now, where they really do deal with each other as partners in this enterprise mm-hmm. and not as Watcher and Slayer anymore. And. That's a tricky thing to do, to, t- to allow characters to change like that and to figure out where they would be as they age and change. And I, was, I really loved that moment between them. I love that he doesn't call her on it. Um, and that she realizes that it's not as dire as she was making right. it. Mm-hmm. Um, that adults realize sometimes, you know, you, you go for... Everybody's got urges and darkness and, and, and kinky and... and <laughs> And, and handcuffs. Kinky. Yeah. And handcuffs. <laughs> and um, and it's not something to be ashamed of. Right. I mean, it's, it's exactly. In fact, if Buffy hadn't been ashamed of it, 
it would have gone better <laughs> the, whole, the whole way through. That's true. And yeah. and I, the only person who really has had a problem with it was Xander. And yeah. that's to be expected because I think he feels a sense of protectiveness over well, she. Well, I think he puts her on a pedestal in a way. Not, not that he, like, she's unreachable, but, you know, like he even said, you're my hero, Buffy. You know, you kind of and and she's kind of she's, his, too. Yeah, yeah. You know, and she sort of looks at her. And, but I think he was more upset. Um, that that he had that he, she didn't feel she could tell him. Yeah. I think that was if she had come to him right when she started seeing Spike and saying, "I don't know what this is about, but I find myself to be sleeping with Spike," <laughs> um, that he would have been a lot cooler <laughs> with it than finding out how he found out. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. And it's interesting you brought up the the change in the characters because a lot of people, I know you said next season is going to go back to more of what it felt like in first the first season, uh-huh. but a lot of people haven't liked. The change in the characters. Right. And I always say, well, you know, everyone changes. You can't stop right. the Simpsons. They don't right. just stay the same. Right. Um, yeah, that is actually, and I understand why it's hard for people um, to accept, but I think it's it's very real. And when you see a loss of innocence, I always get very worried when someone describes something as a coming-of-age story <laughs> because I always say, oh, this is the story of somebody getting laid. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't like loss of innocence stories. I don't like stories that say you have to lose the childlike part of yourself in order and you can grow hard to to function in the world. You don't. You can remain sweet and remain retain your childlike delight and all those things um, and yet people change and so I understand why people are freaked out, but I also think the changes have been very realistic and very believable and um, age-appropriate for our characters. I agree. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to is, is people who aren't willing to accept the change in mm-hmm. characters that they've come to love. And I mean, it was hard to watch Willow the way she was these last couple of episodes. It was hard. And I like right. the way um, uh, Jonathan last night, he specifically went on that little little spiel and said, Willow, our Willow, you know, the one right. used to bring the lunch bag to, to yeah. lunch, you know, it's well, that, that was a weird line, something Rosenberg, he said, um, oh, what was it, he said, they it was, there was the one where they called her Rosenberg, something Rosenberg, something, yeah. An- yeah. Andrew said it, or so. yeah, I can't, I can't remember, it's now. funny though, that was the thing I was thinking of, oh, um, well, maybe we'll think of it, but yeah, that, that Doug Petrie wrote that line and worked very hard on it, and, and was, as I was in his office, and he said, you know, listen to this line. And I was like, oh, that's cool. It's great, yeah. Yeah, and it reminds us that, that Jonathan was there when they were in school. Yeah. And he knew them, like, all the way through. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, and there, the people, there were a lot of people who I talked with on, on the Internet um, saying they would stop watching when Willow became gay. Because, um, you know, they used to watch with their kids, and now she's changed, and, and, and it's all horrible, and now I can't let my daughter see it. I'm like, wait, why? Yeah. I, I was very confused by that. Uh, um, we probably lost some people then. We'll mm-hmm. lose some people now. But um, but you got to, you, you know, when it's time to change, you've got to rearrange. Right. Oh, Brady Bunch. <laughs> yeah. that, was, was that the second or the third Brady Bunch reference? We <laughs> <laughs> the second. Yeah, oh, I'm waiting for a Brady Bunch episode, but X-Files just did one, so you can't really do that. Um, well, we only have a few minutes left. Why don't we talk about what you can say about next season I mean, that you haven't maybe already right. said or maybe synopsis? Oh, I've said far too much. <laughs> um, next season, yes. Uh, uh, looping around to the beginning, high school, mentoring. Mm-hmm. Mm, Joss she, doing some writing. Is she still going to work at the Double Meet? Uh, I think she actually has already been fired at the <laughs> Double Meet. She, she, hasn't hasn't been, she hasn't been there for a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah um, and maybe we'll see Giles? Maybe we'll see Giles. What, if, uh, what about somebody like Amy, who's kind of been left up in the air? I mean, is that always oh, a possibility of bringing her back? It is always a possibility. Okay. Absolutely. Any other returns that were... Mom, very possible. I mean, you could see um, some of the trio, bits and pieces of the trio, you know. Um, you could see. This is, this, is, this is an interesting little hint. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see some old villains. Ooh. Like Drusilla? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe, Faith. maybe more than that. Faith is out there. He's, she's in jail. Faith. 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 I think um, um, she's busy. I, yeah, <laughs> I, think she's I thought busy. Willow was gonna be hanging out with Faith in jail. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> yeah, I, so, I don't think I can comment on faith because I, I have no idea. Actually, okay. Yeah. Well, oh. other, and she said maybe more. Maybe more. Maybe more. Ooh. Back to the beginning, Master. We're thinking but, that. I don't know about the Master. I'm just oh, saying. Oh, she's got a look. What? What? I have no look. <laughs> look, you, you guys out there, back me up. Do I have a look? <laughs> I see no look. I see no look. <laughs> what look? There's no look. Mm. Uh, anything else you want to ask before we... I'm sure there's something else. There's as soon as she walks out the door, we go, damn. And everybody at home is going, ask her this, ask her this. Know, like, Sorry. Like, ask this. Um, you know who I want to see again? I want to see John Ritter again. Yeah, oh, Ted. that... Well, can't we see him in another role, maybe? I mean, does he have to be... Because Ted's kind of... Well, he could have built more than one, which I actually had Don point that out when the Buffy bot was around. I had Don, I specifically wrote a line for Don where she said, is it Ted? Because I always thought there could be more. Yes. Oh. And I was just laying the seeds. I like case. that. <laughs> I, love, I love it when you refer the old, old episodes. Like I know. That. I, really nice. I feel like it's just, it's a little treat for the fans. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I know. I love it. So we're hoping that you will be able to write more episodes next season than you did this one. Yes. Everybody write letters saying, Jane yeah. Espen said, write more episodes. Sure. Tell, tell me. Serious. <laughs> tell Tim he's got to let you write for Angel. It's going to make you. Tim's all busy over at Firefly. Well, tell him, but you know, don't consult him. <laughs> tell, right, right. tell whoever That's you true. need to tell to let okay. you work. That the second yeah. club gals want you to work at Angel. <laughs> okay. And okay. obviously Firefly. And who, I don't know, who no, do Buffy. Even? I want her well, to yeah, work but on okay. Buffy. Well, we don't, we, she's our connection to Buffy. Please, you guys are going to love Firefly so much when you guys see Firefly. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah. I love the lead, Nathan Fillion, uh, lead actor there. Who is that? I, I used is. to watch him on One Life to Live when oh, okay. he used to be Another on soap. You, you're going to like him. He's been described as very climb upable. He's Ooh. he's hot. I swear, he's hot. <laughs> yeah, I love him. I think he's awesome. Yeah. Like, he's a good actor. Bread. And you know you who? Bread for eating giant goldfish crackers? You know who else is in it? Is Ron Glass, who played Detective Harris on Barney Miller. Okay. If y'all remember that, yeah. a very very stylish detective. Mm. Yeah. Is with us on Firefly. Awesome. Oof. Very, very nice. Very cool. Yeah. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for coming thank in you. and oh. for for fitting us into your schedule. <laughs> oh, no problem. And coming in. And we For hope the you'll... third time. Third annual time. And um, if Buffy uh, returns after next... Or we hope you come back next season. Yeah, we know we'll be here next season. But we're not sure, sure about after that. We're not sure. We're not sure. Money has right. to be thrown, so says David Fury. Yeah. He says yes. money has already started to be thrown. So we'll see where it lands. We will see. And I hope some of it lands over here. <laughs> Sponsor us. Sponsor the second Come on, club. UTN. Should we start a petition? Yeah, we should. Let's Wait, put up another petition. Who's going to get that? <laughs> okay. There's a petition for, for a season eight, so we'll see. Okay. We'll be talking about that. Petitions cool. don't raise money, though. That's the problem. That's true. <laughs> it, it would if you had to pay money to sign it. That's true. Hey, get on that, somebody. <laughs> thank you anyway. Thank you, thank you so much yeah, for coming in. And you. we will wish you the best of luck for next season, Firefly, yes. Buffy, and, and even on Angel. Angel. Yeah. And, and we'll see you here next year at the Absolutely. end of the season. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm writing it into my book right now. Oh, very awesome. cool. Okay, so when we come back, we're gonna, Candy and I are going to give you our overview of what we thought of the episodes and give, us, give you some announcements and things like that. And, again, we want to thank our very special guest, Jane, for coming in. Yay. We're very happy she was here. Yay. <laughs> and um, we, we will be back. Obviously, you can tune out, but we'll be back. And um, I, this song's for me because I just love them. Oh, and you, wait, what? Uh-huh. I, what? I'm very, very sorry about Tara. Really, <laughs> Aww, we really feel like bad. Hate and it, it is, it is very possible that we did a bad thing. And I don't want to, I don't want to completely, I don't want to completely exonerate us because um, I could, I could be. It, it is possible. Okay. Interesting. That's very cool of you. <laughs> All right, so with that said, um, <laughs> Jay's going to take off, and we're going to come back, and this is THC with Dip. Welcome back to the Succubus Club on KLBC.org, your truly underground radio station. And I'm back on the good mic. It's been three weeks. Dude, and, and we're, like, alone. I know. It's it's like, I mean, we've got Ethan here. Well, he's like our Scooby gang. <laughs> You're our Slayerette. You're our Slayerette. <laughs> and that was THC doing Dip from Wild at Heart 4.6. And let me just say, I love THC. And you cannot get that CD anywhere. If you know someone who has She's it, got burn it. mine, for heaven's sake. I know, sake. I stole it from you. Um, the thing is, is that uh, George Sarah then did the album with uh, Anthony Stewart Head, which I also I burned you a copy of that. Do you like that one as much? Yes. Well, no, I don't like it as much, but I, you know what? I listen good. to it as much. But it's good. It's, it's actually really good. If yeah. you don't have it, you can buy it off the link off our main page, right. Music for Elevators. Um, and then also... Charles, who if some of you longer time listeners know, did a, the indie shop after us when we were at the other station. He 
put together a CD of, of he went and saw George Sarah, who is the one who writes the music. He did. He saw him in concert oh, a, wow. a couple months ago, and I haven't seen Charles in a couple months. I just saw him the other day, and he gave me a CD of like all this other music he was doing, and it's all just so good, and he's so talented. So. Very cool. Okay. So it's weird that we're now, you know, we want, again, we want to thank Jane for coming in. We did start earlier. And apologize for those of you who forgot or who didn't look at our website or something, but. Oh, well. Not our fault. We what told can you, you do? What can you do? <laughs> um, it was easier for Jane to come here earlier because she had some prior engagements. Yes. So we were, but we we're very glad that she was here. We had a great time talking to her. Absolutely. And now it's like, it's kind of nice that like, we actually. Who are you? I know. Who are you? Hey, who are you? It's kind, of, it's kind of nice that we sort of have this last hour. Just the three of us, just the two of us. That's how kind it of should, be. should be. Just to end the season, because for those of you who don't know, this is our last show until the fall. Yeah. Um, and we're lucky to get tonight, to be quite honest with you. I know. We uh, almost, it was scary for a while. We thought we were going to have to stop, like, right before the season finale. So after tonight, uh, we will not be around all summer long. But what we want you to do is to make sure you keep checking, either go back and keep checking the website. Yes. Um, or subscribe to our mailing list, which is very easy to do. You can just you find it on the front page of, of our main page, off to the left hand side. You'll see uh, subscribe to Secular Club mailing list, and you just click there and you do all that stuff. And if you're on that mailing list, we will let you know whenever something's coming up. We'll let you know um, when our first day is back in the fall, mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. We'll let you know all that kind of stuff. So. We don't we don't send a lot of stuff through that, so you're not going to get right. Sorry, like, <laughs> you're not going to get you know nailed with a bunch of messages. It's right. just basically like an announcement list and and some comments from some of the listeners. It's not yes. no big deal. And obviously you can make comments too. Absolutely. <clears throat> But um, do join the mailing list so you know when we'll be back. And it's not that we don't want to be here. It's just, you know, our new our new digs, KLBC, which we love, um, is not going to be open during the summer for us to use. Right. So, so there you go. Maybe, But maybe next year it will be. I know it's something that they are working on doing, you know, as well as getting a computer, you know, in here. And so maybe next year there will be some, some – Ethan's laughing. Get on that, Ethan. So maybe next – you know, next, when we come back in the fall, there will be some changes. Maybe we'll be able to. But for now, that's the way it is. So, you know, what can you do? Why don't we do make uh, some of the announcements? announcements okay. right now before we I don't want to forget about yes. them and I don't want to run out of time okay here's some announcements okay I'll start small okay Ooh, small. Um, we are going to put there's two things we're going to put up on the website that um, we got recently just for your FYI um, number one four star Mary if you live in the LA area or have access to the Los Angeles area four star Mary is going to be playing this Saturday at the gig in Hollywood and you can probably go to their website I think it's four star if you're on their mailing list um we, I got like a thing uh, talking about the show, and we're going to put that up on the website tonight mm-hmm. or tomorrow. So if you're interested in going to see Force Summer at the gig in Hollywood, um, that will be this Saturday. Also, we got um, from a listener um, a link for a petition to bring a season eight. Now, again, it, if it's a matter of money, there's something we could do about it, but, but hey, you know, they could listen and go, well, we really want this. Maybe if, if um, it would be nice to see that pe- how yes. much people want it. Right. Some people may not want it. They might go. Seven may be just enough. They might be, oh, I don't want season seven. Eight may not be enough. Right. Seven might be enough. Exactly. So so we'll, we're going to put uh, we're gonna put that up on the website as well. Okay. okay. You want to talk about the GFs? Yeah. Golden? Uh, Golden Fang Awards, the annual, this is the third annual Golden Fang Awards coming up. Um, this year, obviously, since tonight's our last show, usually in years past, what we've been able to do is devote a whole show just to the Golden Fang Awards. Those of you who've participated in the past know that we put up a ballot. You guys vote. It's all by the fans. Yes, all listener votes. For about a week, and then we tally the votes, and we have a whole show, and we announce the winners. It's a big deal here at Succubus Club Land. Um, Except this year. <laughs> <laughs> this year, it's a little different because of what we've already mentioned, that we can't, we're not going to be doing any more shows. So, it will be web-based completely, and what this means is tonight, I... I leave here at 8. I'll get home about 10 or 11. <laughs> um, I live far away. <laughs> and you live in something called Romo Land or yeah, something. I, I was live, like, what is that? It's it's right by uh, Hemet. Uh, for those of you who do a lot of skydiving, it's by Lake Paris. You got to say Hemet like that. Hemet. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Sun City. It's, it's all around there. It's, it's out in the desert. It's in the boonies. It's, it's real dirty. It's in the 909. Seriously. Um, anyway, my point being, I get home late. Tonight when I get home, I'm going to be uploading the ballot for the Golden Fang Awards and updating the website to give you the link for the Golden Fang Awards. So sometime tonight around midnight Pacific time, midnight 1 a.m. around there, 
the ballot will be up and you will be allowed to vote from there until uh, the end of the month. And at the end of the month, on midnight at midnight, which is May 31st, it's not that far away. No, it's it's about nine, so eight, nine days. Uh, you'll have that amount of time to vote. One vote per person. I will know if you voted twice, and that second vote will be deleted. <laughs> um, lots of great categories. What will happen is it, it'll end May 31st, and then on June 1st, we will I will put the winners up on the website. Again, a lot of this is just going to be done through the website. Right. So the winners will be up June 1st um, uh, with pretty little graphics like last year. and um, <laughs> Those are cool. Yeah. Uh, and so just keep up with the website. Go there maybe sometime tomorrow in the next couple of days and make sure you get in your ballot. Do, do we have the category this year, favorite succubus club host? Kitty Candy or Ethan? <laughs> We were going to do that last year, we I remember, but with, G- with, with Jam Mike and with Punker Mike as right. the other alternative, ba- favorite second club personality. Right, there you go. And, uh, and then we decided that'd be a little mean. <laughs> I know, because you get all the votes. No, 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 no. I think Ethan would win. Ethan would probably win in a list. Ethan would just win by default. Just we would everyone, cancel each other's votes. Because everybody would just be like, yeah, we're sick of them. We're yeah. for Ethan. We've been listening to them for far too long. <laughs> We like Ethan the best. Um, I'd vote for Ethan. I would too. So. I'd vote for Ethan. Yeah. I don't like you all that much. Yeah, and I know you you're kind of suck, sick of me. But we have a lot of great categories. You know, the, the, the typical ones about best actress, supporting actor, actress. And it is Buffy and Angel combined. It is combined. But we have, you know, great fun things. You know, like best fight, best kiss, best couple. Worst hair. Worst hair, worst style and dress. Um, we got, uh, I know, one category Strictly just for Buffy is your favorite song from the musical. From the musical, mm-hmm. We've got categories like uh, best um, supporting or, or best what best underused character. Best un, you know most underused characters yeah. so, and who would you like to see return that kind of thing. Just you know fun little right. fan awards. And that, we still have best one liners. So start thinking of the of the one liners that yeah, you like. Favorite episode, favorite um, writer from each show. Yes. Um, and. Um, all sorts of fun little things. So we've been gathering the nominees through the entire season, and so it's pretty thorough, I think, in my opinion, and um, a lot better than last year when I had to guess on a lot of them. <laughs> Shh, don't tell anybody. Uh, but it's pretty fair, and it's pretty thorough, so I think you guys will enjoy it. Um, if a nominee that you want to be on there isn't on there, don't bother because it's not going on there afterwards. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's just next how it is. Year. Yeah, next year we'll take it into consideration. <laughs> but just so you know, sometime tomorrow or in the next few days, head on over there. And, and we'll, pro- we'll put it up on the um, the website and the mailing list. Yes, we'll send out a link to the mailing list as soon as it's up. I'll remind everybody about that. Absolutely. Um, listener appreciation. Listener appreciation. Again, usually is a whole show unto itself. Yes. Not this year. No. <laughs> if you've headed to our website, you've seen that we have the a stuff. L- oh, my gosh. Have you seen, Ethan? The stuff we Did have. you go over there? Did you see the list of all the cool stuff we and have? And we just had Jane sign the cool Lone Gunman comic. Yes, which is rare. And, and it was courtesy of City of Angel. Absolutely. And uh, so we have, if you go to the, our website, you'll see a list of all the stuff we've got. Some of it signed, some of it not, but it's still, still very cool. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to pick listeners to appreciate. Yes. Um, it's a little different than last year. Last year it was completely random. This year it's a little more concentrated. We're actually sincerely appreciating people who have participated in the show, who have supported us and the show over the last year, um, and we are sincerely thanking them with whatever we can. Yes. Um, it's not necessarily favoritism. It's simply genuine appreciation. Right, because, I mean, this is stuff we've collected over the years. and Well, just in this last year. Yeah, I mean, over this last year. And some of it's stuff we've purchased ourselves, mm-hmm. we've bought. Mm-hmm. Um, some of it has been donated. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, I guess we could keep it all. But we so could keep we it still, all. And there's no some cool idea. stuff. Oh, my I mean, there's God. some scripts and things, and I'm just like, God, why are we giving this away? But, you know, we do want to appreciate the people that have, that have stuck by us, that have been with us, and that have really helped us, you know, make the show what it is. And who send letters of love after we get letters of hate. I know. People go, wow, fine, we don't like you, we don't get appreciated. Oh, well. <laughs> you get no prize. <laughs> you do not get no prize. <laughs> so again, if you don't like us, then why would you want something from exactly. us anyway? Exactly. Um, Especially the signed Stephen Tonight lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> or the magazine of which Willow's on the cover. That he signed. That he signed. Oh, Willow Terra fans, I don't know if you want they that. They don't want that. No. They so don't want that. No. Anyway, um, 
what's going to happen with that is over the next week or so, Kitty and I off the air are going to get together and kind of determine who gets what. And that will be posted, the list of winners, their names, or e- not their email addresses, but we're going to get as close as we can. Winners will be posted on June 1st, the same time as the Golden Fang winners. If your name is on that list, email us, and we will go from there. Right. That's how it works. And if you don't, so you need to look. And if you don't contact us, then after a while, we're just going to give your prize to somebody else. Yep. Or we'll just keep it for next year. Or we'll just keep it for next year. Yeah. Um, Yeah. We'll give you maybe, you know, two, three weeks to contact us, to check the website, let us know. And after that, it's, it's... Back in the pool, kids. Exactly. And one also one thing we also have is a really nice signed poster of Once More with Feeling. Now, we have um, it signed by Jane Espenson, David Fury, Stephen DeKnight, Tim Minear, and Drew Greenberg. Okay? Yes. And so signed by those five people, those five people that have been on the show. With little messages. They yes. don't just sign their names. Right. They didn't just sign their names. They wrote little messages, which is very cool. And they're hilarious. And we're not going to tell you what they are. We're not going to tell you what they are. Now, here's what we're doing with that. And we'll let you know through our website and through the mailing list how you can get your hot little hands on this poster. Because this is going to take a little more work. This is take a little more work on our part because what we're going to do is we're going to put it up on eBay, but we're going to do a private eBay auction. So that means not anybody just searching through eBay could get in on this auction. Mm-hmm. We, it's going to be a private auction. We'll tell you how to get in on the auction, and all the money will go to charity. We will not keep the money. No. We will not. Lord knows we deserve it. Lord Lord knows we need the money. And we need it. Oh, God, do we need it. (laughs) But we're not going to keep the money. We will give the money to charity, and we will let you know what charity it goes to. So if you don't like the charity, you don't have to bid on it. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's how we're going to do it. (laughs) Like, I'm against children. I will not allow my money to go to children's charity. I'm against saving the whales, man. (laughs) I'm against fuzzy animals and dangerous species. I'm actually for cancer so i will not <laughs> donate to anything fighting cancer so we depending on um you know we might spread we might spread it out like it'll go to a couple different charities yeah, we'll i have certain charities that i wouldn't mind it going to um so that's how that's gonna go so the money will go to a good cause as well as you get a really you'll, cool signpost and you'll get a receipt it's not like it's yeah <laughs> or a deposit slip from my bank i don't know <laughs> and it is um and it is an original first printing of the post it is and it is signed by all of those people yes. as such and it's kept in really good condition it'll be sent it's not i'm not framing it for you no but, it's rolled up in, in a tube yeah and we'll send it to y'all pretty um so there's that that's going to come later in the summer yeah, when we'll we work you know. all the details out so there's that. And we, and yeah, and the, one, one of the reasons why we're doing it in private auctions is because we don't want outsiders, as I should say, people, anybody who might just come in, swoop down, try to bid on it, and get it, and then turn around and sell it somewhere else for hire. Yeah. And that's not what we want to do. We want a fan or a, list, a fan of the show mm-hmm. who's going to listen, who's going to get it and keep it and cherish it. Absolutely. That's what we want. That's why we want to do it in a private auction. So, um, you know, that's, that's what we wanted. Okay. This? Vegas, baby, Vegas. Okay, here's the deal, kids. We're not on all summer. So uh, one of our listeners, dear Flipley, came to us and said, Hey, how about if we try and schedule some kind of a succubus club trip, trip, a retreat, a <laughs> gathering, a, a vacation, yes. if, if you will, to somewhere like Vegas or Southern California or something like that. And we were like, sure, great. We didn't think it was actually going to happen. I so didn't think he was going to do it. But he did. Oh, yes, he did. With the help of Mia and Slayer Staff. Absolutely. And uh, so between the three of them, they hooked us in, man. They, uh, we, ha- we will be in Las Vegas July 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. I won't be there the 8th, though. <laughs> yeah, she's going to leave on the 7th. I have to leave. Um, but we'll, the rest of us will be there on the 8th. Um, it's a long weekend in Vegas, and we're going to be there. We are inviting anybody who wants to come to Vegas and who has the means to come to Vegas uh, to come to Vegas and hang out with us. Um, we will put together, I believe, one function that will become right. kind of like an official function of the weekend. The rest, you can do whatever you want to. You can right. leave. You don't have to be, hang out with us at all. Right. Um, it's kind of like the PVP where, you know, the other things are kind of optional if you want to go to them. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll have one thing on one of the nights, perhaps yeah. a Saturday night, perhaps. where you know we'll let everyone know where we're going to be and we're all going to go somewhere and have fun. Right. Uh, let me make this perfectly clear. We're not paying for you. This is not a trip to win. <laughs> this is. This is. <laughs> We we can't we can barely afford to go ourselves. Right. So, so uh, but this is us just letting you know if you want to take a vacation around that time if you're not sure what you want to do, 
We'll all be in Vegas. We'll be having a blast, and it'll be fun. And if you want to come, what we would like for you to do is email us at vegas at the com, and that email will be forwarded to one of the three people we've already mentioned to take care of the details to let you know what's going on. So, if you're interested or want more information, Vegas at the com. Again, this is July 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. This, uh, that email and this information will be also put up on the website tonight. Yes. So, that's the deal with that. We're going to do thank yous at the end of the okay, show. We'll thank you. so we have, yes, we have a list of thank yous, and we'll do that at the end. And we're going to take a break right now uh, and play a song. And when we come back, we're going to... Uh, no, the one on top of it. Yeah. That one, yes. Yeah. Okay. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will give our final thoughts, more specific thoughts about Buffy. Right, and the episode, and, and, then we'll the, episodes and the season. And uh, also, uh, we'll touch on Angel as well. Absolutely. All right. Um, f- fitting that this was also a season finale um, song, mm-hmm. uh, Sarah McLachlan with Full of Grace. I hate this place. No, I don't really hate this place. I'll tell you why. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jim Mike. Oh, my God. GM Mike. This is like a spoiler oh, we didn't know about. This is the spoiler oh. I didn't know about. Okay, well, we'll go to the song. When we come back, you have to stay. And you have to stay for a few minutes. Mike. Okay. Oh, good. I'm See, it's cry. a good thing we screwed up the song. <laughs> I did. I totally screwed up the song, and I was coming back to say, damn it. <laughs> and then he walks in. Okay. Okay. So Sarah McLaughlin, full of grace? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Here we go. There we go. Welcome back to the Succubus Club on KLVC.org, your truly underground radio station. That's Sarah McLaughlin doing Full of Grace from Becoming 2, 2.22. And I'm Kitty, that's Candy's producer, Ethan, over the corner, Hi. and GM Mike. Yeah. Aww. You are on. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you, hear me now? you are on. Can you hear, Can you hear me? me now? Can you hear me? This is so cool because, I mean, obviously, for those of you who've been listening for a long time, you know, you know that, um, you know, GM Mike, you know, was our GM. And <laughs> he'll always be GM Mike no matter what. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> yes. Have you seen that? Uh... Yes. Yes. <laughs> so now we'll... This we'll... is like the best thing because... I know, it's like the best last show All ever. we need is like Punker Mike to come in and... I know, waiting for the door to open. <laughs> Punker? I can't hear myself. It's okay. That's, okay. It's the mic. It's the mic. Is it really? People, yeah. People seem to be able to hear okay out there. Oh, okay. Just That's okay because it's just you. Ah! Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, I'm just kidding. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, um, GM Mike used to come in almost every show and do 30 seconds with GM Mike, talk about the previous night's Buffy. Yeah, yeah. Did you watch last night's um, final episode Actually, of Buffy? Yeah, it was great. Did I, you? I really what was your favorite part? Yeah. I like the uh, I like the ending, you know, the Sarah great. McLaughlin song. It really put me in tears. See, <laughs> see it helps that he listened to the show earlier. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Did it, you like the two-hour finale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the third hour special. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, third hours are our special. Do you mean uh, the news? Yeah, the <laughs> news. Exactly. They put everything in place for me. So. Yeah, know, great perspective you had there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would you it. think of that that spike scene? It was, you know, at the end, the whole montage and how it <laughs> flowed from one into the other. It was good. It was really? Good. <laughs> what, what about Willow? How do you think? You know? Oh what, yeah. What do you think about Willow? Was Willow in it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, didn't she rise from the like stick her hand out of the grave or something? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! What do you think of Willow's hair? Oh my God! You know, and I know you had some interest in that too, didn't you? <laughs> yes, uh, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What color was it? Orange. (laughs) What color was it after it was orange? Blue. Uh, No, that was me. Yellow. No, that was me. Green. No, I never had green. No. Brown. No. Black. Yes, there you go. (laughs) Oh, Mike, we love you so much. Yes, we do. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. oh. It wasn't me. Oh, my God. What did you do? She broke her. No, no, no. This is one of my my stones from my ring. Is it diamond? No, it's not diamond. Is it one of your grandma's rings? Yes. It's one of my stones. Well, I can hear myself now. Woohoo. Lucky you. <laughs> Excuse me. Inter- entertain yourself. Okay. <laughs> hey, Jim, Mike. Yeah. Uh, how you doing there? I'm pretty good. <laughs> Candy, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. <laughs> really? Oh, come on. You guys have more to do than that. <laughs> No, okay, so, yeah, so we were just talking about internet radio and, and how we may not be on the air next year. Really? Yeah. Uh, what? Oh, you mean because of that carp thing and all that? Thing going through. Yeah, because if, if, if KLBC can't stay on the air, we're going to have to find other digs. We're going to have to do this out of the back of a Jeep and, and drive through the desert. You know, <laughs> yeah. like Christian Slater. <laughs> right, and, and pump up oh, the volume. That's, you know what? 
that. <laughs> no, you guys. That, I'm only going to do it if Ethan comes with it's us. It's funny you guys mention that because it's all going to come full circle right now. Really? My whole reason for starting my internet radio show from my dorm room right. was because of that movie. And, and anybody who knows anything knows that Mike doing that out of his dorm room was the start yes. of KB Radio, which is exactly. where we were broadcast from. Wow. Wow, it's trippy. Are you feeling it? I'm, I'm, fe- <laughs> I'm feeling the love. I'm feeling nauseous right about now. Too many golden and fishy plus things. And you guys have been on for three hours, too. It's that two and a half at like this point. I know. Yeah. People are sick of us. I know. I'm sick of us. I'd be sick of you. <laughs> <laughs> are you sick of us, Ethan? Ethan loves us. Don't know. I think it's great. Every time I call, <laughs> suck this club for the street. We made him do that. Okay, this is the story. This is what it was. <laughs> the first it's first great. phone call we got, he just said hello or here. He said KLBC. Can I help you or something like that? And and after he hung up, I'm like Ethan, we have to answer it the right way. You have to say. This succubus club, this is producer Ethan, can I help you? <laughs> so then the next time the phone rang, he did it, and we were, like, talking, and we heard it, we just He's busted up, man. It was it so he has great. a huge yeah. fan club, And you know? the thing is, you know, I mean, honestly, it's, you know, it really makes a show, and it's, you know, it's, it's funny, because I, I, I think it's a great thing, you know, really to be a producer of this show. I mean, you guys have an awesome, my friend was just walking <laughs> by, um... And he was walking by my office, and he heard it. I'm like, yeah, these are my friends from, you know, they did a show, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, yeah, they sound really good. Aww. And, Aww, I mean, you guys, it sounds really good. I try and tune in whenever I can, seeing as I kind of have to. Because <laughs> <laughs> the stream seems to be broken in one way or another. <laughs> but, no, I mean, it's, you know, it's awesome that you guys have been doing it as long as you have. And it's, you know, it's really built up a following. Yeah, over and, three years. Uh, oh. You know, I keep telling them they got to keep going. I know. Yeah, I know. Mike, Mike is to. like our little cheerleader. He keeps seeing. <laughs> I'll see him on on uh, me, AIM. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see him on AIM, and and he's he's like, you should do something with this, you know, like do something. And I'm like, yeah, and like get paid. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, it's really cool. You guys have done a good job, and, you know, I just oh, want to congratulate you. you know. oh, thank you. That's so sweet of you. And uh, I'm all the clamps, just like last night's episode. I know. <laughs> you know, at the end with that thing? Right, with the thing, with the, the rise out of the grave thing? Graham, yeah. Ham, yeah, apparently that was out. Willow, too. <laughs> <laughs> apparently it was Willow. I didn't even know that. You know, it's, it made me <laughs> right. cry. Really? Oh, I know. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. We have a connection. It's like oh, butter. It's like butter. Oh, yeah. It's just like butter. <laughs> oh. It's bad. Saturday Night Live. It is. <laughs> or Bad Succubus Club. Okay. That's saying something. I know. <laughs> I know. That is. We were going to talk about Buffy here, but apparently we're not going to. No, we will. No, it's okay. We so, like having uh, Jim Mike here. To get totally off the subject. Yeah, go ahead. Maybe we haven't out. already. Oh, people have tuned out already. Oh, don't really? worry. Yeah, don't worry. Oh, they stopped listening. Have like, you been listening when Jane to Mark left. and Brian? Have no. a very scientific method of figuring out whether the Lakers or the Kings are going to win? No. What they oh, you do? you haven't? No, I, I don't listen to Mark and Brian. Okay. Well, the thing is they have a very scientific method on figuring out on who's going to win, whether the Lakers or the Sacramento Kings. What is this? The West Coast? Uh, the West, West Conference Coast Conference, Conference Finals. Finals. Yeah, yeah. Do you follow it? Yeah. She's yeah, a huge Lakers, Lakers fan. I'm a huge Lakers fan. Well, they have their very scientific method for figuring out how. Actually, they had a very scientific method of trying to get a car alarm to <laughs> go off. And what they did is hooked a microphone up to a set of speakers. And they had people, they wanted people to fart to try and set off the car alarm. <laughs> and if the car alarm w- set, got set but, off, then the Lakers uh, would win? No, no, this has, uh, actually is totally separate. Thing. Oh, but okay. apparently no one had any gas that morning. Oh, so, God. You know, but anyways, going back to the Lakers. Thank yes. God we don't do that in the show. Well, let's go back to the Lakers, yeah, so there's please. a very sci- scientific method for figuring out who is going to win. This is trying to predict who's going to win. What they do is they call up, let's say, two of the same. They start with the target. So they start with the target in Sacramento and target in L.A. They'd call up oh and they'd go, they'd call up the target and go, hi, uh, this is Mark and Brian. Your voice is on the air. L.A. Lakers are going to win. And they see how they respond. First person they call hangs up. They go, okay. So then they call up. Uh, I'd they, be like, screw you. They call up the target in L.A. They go, this is Mark and Brian radio show. Your voice is on the air. Sacramento Kings are going to win. And they go, no, they're not. <laughs> and they go, really? They go, no, they're not. And they go, okay, thank you. So that's one point to zero. <laughs> so they've been calling, like, all these places. I'm they, surprised that more Kings fans aren't, like, freaking out. Actually, you know, I have it flipped around because the first girl that picked up in Sacramento, she's like, no, the Lakers, the Sacramento yeah. Kings are going to win. Sacramento Kings are going to win. And But it's funny. So they called Starbucks. They <laughs> called Target. They called In-N-Out. They should call us. They called Dairy Queen. They've been calling... All these places. They call Dairy very, Queen. The DQ. The DQ. The scientific method of figuring out who's going to win. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's, who's winning? 
I think the Lakers are up right now. Really? Yeah, they're like four to two. Well, they are going to win, you know. <laughs> Apparently. Well, they are. So what happens after they win? Who do they play next? The when probably the New Jersey Nets, unless is that the East Coast? Yes, conference? unless unless the Nets, unless Boston beats the Nets, which I don't think so. so you can tell how much I follow this. It's all you know. <laughs> Mike Michael doesn't. Bryan. It, it has nothing to do. If with all sports. is right with the world, it will be. Well, of course, some people think it would be great if it was a Celtic Laker game, but it's, the Celtics aren't going to win. It's going to be New Jersey versus the Lakers. It better be. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> wow, that was way. Because if topic. it isn't, all right, it's way off topic. People, well, people are. Oh, I also yeah. brought you guys some other presents. <gasps> It's not like super great, but this is actually a new flavor. Oh, I, I have the it. mint ones. Uh huh. What is it? The mints. The thing is, for the listeners, I was in my office and their breath smelled really bad. I could just smell it all the way. <laughs> Our hours. Yeah. Apparently. So I just wanted to provide them with some mints, you know, because they really <laughs> they needed it. And <laughs> you I, need two. I gave them two each, you know. She only gave me one. Two. No, I don't need two. I have the other flavor. What flavor is this? These are what did I just stick in my mouth? Glass. They're drugs. <laughs> Ecstasy laced with that crap, and we'll here's some alcohol. And then, there, too, you know. know. Now you won't be going to prom. What? Are we not supposed to talk about this? Oh, sorry. Never mind. Oh, no drug talk? Oops. Buffy. Buffy on drugs? Producer Ethan is getting on our case. I guess we're not supposed to be talking about it. Okay, talk about Buffy. Oops. Talk we about Buffy. Talk about that. Talk about Buffy. Let's talk about Buffy. Rugs? Anyone want to get some rugs? <laughs> <laughs> Those acid free rugs? Yeah, I need an Oriental. <laughs> Rug. I want to talk about what I thought about Buffy and Angel. I was underwhelmed with last night's show. I, I was a little underwhelmed. Out. Huh? You think they should date they Buffy should date. and Angel? Yeah, this, I think, oh, no. They're, they're, <laughs> <laughs> for a second, I thought they were both guys. I was like, oops. Wait. Oh, no. Buffy That's and a whole girl. other show. Oh, my God. I was a little underwhelmed, too. And See, now I, this is getting beyond me. No. This is like where 30 you could seconds still starts going. Well, you could let Ethan sit because she actually watched last night's episode. Did he really? It's his, it's his job. It's his job, man. He takes jobs seriously. He's watched about... Mm. Are you saying I don't take my job seriously? Yeah, I watched the whole first episode on DVD. Oh. oh. The whole first season? The whole first... Oh, good for you. Sweet. I'm getting denied. Ethan's barely watched any Buffy, for the, those of you who didn't know. Prophecy Girl. Good episode, huh? Last one? The very last good. one. Good one. Get out of there. Get out of there. Ethan. Ethan. I'm getting ixnated. Yeah, you are. Say hello to all the fans, because you have fans, hello too. Fa- Do I really? Absolutely. I went in the chat board they and miss there you. were like three people. They're like, hi, Gia Mike. Hi, Gia Mike. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah, not uh, many people <laughs> in our chat room. Yeah, there were about like. Because it boots people out. Ten in there. It does it? Sometimes. It's Yahoo. What do uh, you want? Yeah. <laughs> Yahoo. Ooh. I can't do that anymore. Her voice is crap. Right. gone. What'd you do? Screaming. Yelling at the brats. Too much talking. Yep. Too many rugs. And I say brats with a lot of affection. <laughs> Hey, uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Hey, God, I, it's yelling at my third session kids. The good thing this is our last show. We may not come back. <laughs> I have to yell over my third session kids. I'm talking all the time. Shouldn't you not be yelling? Jam Mike? Aren't you supposed to have some control? Say goodbye. No, I have no control. Fine, then. I love you, Jam Mike. But love you, Mike. Goodbye. I love you, too. I love all you listeners. Okay, we want we want Ethan to sit in because we want to actually talk about... We're going to take a break. Weekend. We're going to take a break. Ethan's going to sit in. We're going to talk about Buffy and Angel. Do you watch Angel, too? Okay, we'll talk He's about like, Buffy. Mm-hmm. I'll talk about Angel, because I want to talk about what? Angel's slow depth, you know, diving to hell. Slow depth. Yeah, well, you'll, you, if you saw it, you get it. All right, here we go. When we come back, <laughs> we will talk about Buffy and Angel. Wrap I it love up this show. And talk about, and we will thank all the people that we've been wanting to thank. Thank you. Drive and, through. Yes, thank you. Drive through. <laughs> Rasputina, Transylvania concubine. Welcome back to the Succubus Club. On KLBC.org, your truly underground radio station. I love saying that. That was Rasputina doing Transylvanian Concubine. And that is from Surprise 2.13. You haven't watched that season yet. I have not. No. But you have watched all of season one. Yes. I'm Katie. That's Candy. We have producer Ethan who's sitting with us. And we're going to, you know, we're going to talk about, la- you know, we're going to sort of wrap it up. Talk about what, you know, our final thoughts about last night's Buffy and the season. And um, I do want to talk a little bit about Angel. And I want to talk about Angel really quick first because. Go ahead. Now, if you saw the end of Angel, I, you know, I wasn't crazy about the whole episode because of the whole Connor thing and the whole, you know, oh, let's pretend I like you, but I really hate you. Right. You know, but I did like the end, and I'm very curious to see what's going to happen next season. It's good, very cliffhangery, which yes. is always fun. So they, they put Angel in a huge steel box. They only put him in this huge metal, rusty box, but they seal it, and they, they, they bolt him in, and they weld it shut. And dump him in the ocean. And dump him in the ocean. He just goes down, down. And I loved that. I was like, that is pretty cool. And if, you know, if, if it's anything like the Buffy world, 
Um, three months later, they'll, are they going to find him? <laughs> well, the thing is, is that vampires, from what we've seen, uh, at least with Spike um, in the stall, we really have to go on anybody who, any vampires who don't have blood, a sustained uh, uh, nutrition of blood, uh, any, kind, any kind of blood, it, it slowly deteriorates them. Right. It doesn't kill them like right. that, but it is like starving them. Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it will kill them eventually. That would suck. <laughs> and the no thing, pun intended. I know. And the thing is, like, okay, Cordy, all powerful. It's like, hello. She's like a little angel. You weren't, you well, weren't, you weren't saving Sunnydale anytime soon, were you? The thing is, is that will charisma be back? We don't know yet. And it's, David didn't say. I mean, he could have been lying to us, but he just he didn't. Or I won't say lying, but he might have just not been telling us. He'd been leading us on. Or he may not have known, but. You know, we asked him about if Christmas coming back, and he said, I didn't hear anything about her not coming back. Well, so. and, I'll, uh, and I'll tell you right now, the look on his face said that he knew something, and he just couldn't say anything. Oh, okay. And I'll tell you right now, I paid attention to his face. It was the face of somebody who kind of knew that Charisma may not be back. back. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm saying that I wouldn't be surprised if Charisma didn't. I don't know why she might not be back. I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to spread rumors because there's plenty of them out there spreading already. Yes. Uh, if she's n- if she does not come back, uh, they left it wide open. Obviously, yes. um, if she does not, it will be a great disservice to the show, in my opinion. Charisma is awesome. Cordelia is awesome. I love both of them very much. And um, as witnessed in the few episodes where she wasn't there, it just felt like there was a huge hole missing. As good as a quality as those shows were, those specific episodes, right. you still felt like a huge heart missing yeah. from that sh- from that episode. But I am Levin Wesley. Even though he slept Dude. with, with um, what's her face? Lila. Lila. And the thing, interesting comment that she made. He's all, get out. <laughs> he was such a bastard. He was great. Um, the th- interesting comment that she made is that Angel has a, is, is now regaining his soul. And you're losing yours. And, you're, and Wesley's losing his. Very interesting. I don't, I'm not sure if I really, I mean, it's cool to see him like that, but I'm not sure if I want him to stay like that. I'm, I'm hoping he doesn't stay like that, but I do like seeing him like this for a little while. Yeah, I, I just, again, I'm, I'm much with the Scooby aspect of everything, and seeing Gunn and Fred at the end kind of looking around, where is everybody? Yeah, Cordy's up in wherever, what, uh, um, <laughs> Angel's down in the depths of despair in the ocean, and Wesley's off blinking the the the, the bad per- person, <laughs> Lila. Yeah, what, whatever. So we'll see what happens uh, with Angel. Yeah, um, you know, I'm it curious. wasn't the strongest season, wasn't the strongest episode, but I'll be back next season. I will. Watch. Sunday nights at nine o'clock. Mm-hmm. I was a little bummed it's a Sunday night because HBO has their Sunday night lineup. But you know, the cool thing about HBO is they always show everything that they showed on Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, exactly. Sunday. So it's not like you, you'll miss it. Okay. So that's all right. Uh, Buffy. Buffy. Uh, Ethan, you watched last night's uh, show. What I did? did you, what did you think? I liked it. Did I liked you? It a lot. Oh, you know, like very, very cool. Yeah, you like the dark, evil, willow type of stuff? Yes, I did. And what? it was it was cool just the way it ended because it was right after I had finished watching the first season. Right. And so there was, a, there was a lot of Xander and Willow. Right. Oh, yeah. On, and yeah. it ended that way and it was... And you can see that their friendship from the very beginning right. was very strong. And so it made a lot more sense, I'm sure, to you that Definitely. he was there for, yeah. Definitely. I would imagine if somebody didn't know how right. how long their friendship had been. I mean, he men- even mentions it in the episode last night. You know, when when you're five years old, you broke your crayon. Right. You know, you know that it's a long, long friendship. And, and they always, have, throughout the season, they always make reference to how long they've been friends. Right. So, Well, cool. Uh, anything, what else about, did you... Observant, come on, just tell us what you thought. Well, the only thing I'm really confused about at all right now. Okay, that's fair. It doesn't even have anything to do with last night's episode. It's watching the first season all the way through. Right. When is Buffy's birthday? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's uh, changed a couple of times. Yeah, because in a couple in the episode where the 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 demon screaming demon with the horns was Ye- in the computers. Yes, yes, yeah, I robot you, Jane. The yeah. principal's computer said she was born in '80, and then. The guy's computer said it was in 79, like four right. seconds later. She basically, she, uh, <clears throat> I think she turned 16. She turned 16 in, in season two? Yeah, I think so. Six, I think she turned 16 in season two. And it's a huge birthday when you when you see season two DVDs, which come out in, uh, I believe, June on June 14th or June 16th, somewhere, somewhere around there. 
um, you'll see it's a huge deal. So every year, and it's actually become a big deal, Buffy's birthday episode. Um, every single year something yes. bad happens. Right. So, um, or something, something happens. And traditionally it's in the month of February. February. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's way off. Yeah. Yeah. So, so obviously. We've seen it in May. We've seen it in. You, you have to keep in mind season one was done and they didn't know if they were going to be picked up for season two. So right. they had to probably go back and just change a few things. So just to make it work. Because you want the birthday in February sweeps. Yes. <laughs> That's how it works. Makes sense. Yeah. But so, so you like last night's episode. You're. I did. Very, very much. Very much. More than before. You like, you're like, wow, that's cool. Well, I like to. I'm, I don't know. I'm becoming a little. Buffy holic. Uh, <laughs> see, he's like, I can't stop. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's a good show. It's not just like, well, hot yeah. chicks kicking ass, but it's good show. It's good writing. It's good everything. Yeah, for the most part. I think. But it must be interesting to see, you know, sort of like, like when for us to see Giles come back last night. I don't know if that same impact is different for you. I doubt it. Well, I hadn't had a lot of Giles right. at all. Yeah. So, you know, the f- past few episodes, I know he wasn't there. Right. Yes. But then and I really liked him in the season one stuff. Yeah. So yeah. That made it really cool also. Yeah. Because for me, you know, for those of you who weren't spoiled, you know, I was so shocked and happy and just, oh, my God, I was giddy. You know, that here's Giles saving the day and, oh, he's going to die. I mean, it was it was so – I. I do feel a little bit that it was a little anticlimactic. I mean, the entire it, episode or him returning? No, 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 no. The, the whole thing. Okay. Not, not Giles. Giles coming back was, was, was awesome. Yeah, it was you one know, of the best parts there of was, the There was thing. so much emotion I had. You know, so-and-so's going to die. No, they're going to live. Giles is here. He might die. Oh, my God. I had so many different emotions going into this episode and involved with the episode. Mm-hmm. But I did feel the same way you did, just sort of. Okay. It wasn't until the last, but I still liked it. I no, still I absolutely liked it. Was it was technically lot. very, very good. I, I have no problems with the writing, directing, and the pacing of the episodes at all. My problem, it, it comes from my lack of emotional investment in this storyline, in in Willow's storyline, to be quite honest with you. And this is a girl who I've watched for six years now, who I love and adore and always supported and rooted for. And, you know, when her heart broke, I always said when Allison Hannigan cries, Nothing can stop me from crying because she cries better than anybody I've ever seen. And, and she always makes me weepy. And she always makes me feel something for the most part. But this this whole trip to the dark side, I I question, and, you know, I, I probably could have done it with Jane here, but I didn't want to start a fight. Because, um, <laughs> you know, she could probably kick her She ass. could probably kick my ass. No, I mean, I question the timing of everything. Like I mentioned to her Tara dying earlier on, I think, would have had more of an impact on me because I would have seen just, I would have had episode after episode of Willow getting just so grievous and and just just so. That's where I disagree with you. I understood her point by saying that it had to be the rage first. I get that. But what happened was this show spent so little time building up the Willow Tara love story, even though they've been together since season four. You know, they did. They really didn't spend a whole lot of time on them as a couple. To be quite honest with you. Mm-hmm. You got something like Buffy and Angel, who from the very first season until the time, I'm not gonna spoil Ethan, <laughs> but till till the time of the big thing in season two. <laughs> you know that big thing. The big season, thing. Yeah, uh-huh. The big thing. You know, by that time, you're crying along with them because this is this great, huge love story that they invested so much right. time in, and you are aching for these people. I'm so excited for you to like see it for the first time. It's always great to talk to first time Buffy watchers. Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> but with this story, you've got this this love story that I believed. I've I've always liked them together as a couple. I've had no problem with them. Uh, and I believe that they're in love and all that good mushy stuff. But it wasn't enough for me to say I felt bad for Willow. It's not that I didn't wasn't upset that Tara died. Yeah, okay. It sucked. But I didn't feel anything for Willow last night until mm-hmm. the very end, and that's where it lost me, because the whole freaking two hours was about her, and about her coming back yeah. in, in all I, her I pain. Did, I did like her the quick descent into the darkness. I thought yeah. it was cool. I thought it was it was a good thing to do because she was so working on the rage. It was not about the emotion. It was not about the grieving. It was about anger, rage. I'm 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 going off half cocked. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna listen to what anyone says. I'm gonna do what my, you know, brain is telling me to do. Evil, evil, hate, hate. Right. And I liked that. I thought that was great. I loved all the things she did. I liked everyone was scared. What are we gonna do? Um I I did like it. It was exciting. But I do feel, I do have the same feeling you do in a way. 
that I didn't really empathize or sympathize with Willow until toward the end. Right. I mean, obviously, when Tara died, I totally sympathized with Willow and empathized because I've had deaths in my family. But, yeah. but it wasn't until she was talking to Xander. Yes, then I really felt for her. Mm-hmm. But maybe we weren't supposed to. Maybe Perhaps. we were supposed to just be like, damn, she's evil. Yeah. Damn, she's mean. Every commercial break, every time they would fade to black, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, every, no. every time, I swear, because it was just like, no, not, no. But something I really thought was interesting was one scene, I can't remember who exactly she's speaking to, whether it be Giles or Buffy, but she kept switching back from Willow to me, third person to first person. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and because I, the reason I noticed this is because of something that Fury said about how, you know, Buffy's out of her mind when she's doing this, Willow's out of her mind when she's doing that, therefore making them almost not responsible for right. their actions, which I think sucks. However, I like the fact that she at first started with Willow this, Willow that, but then she turned it and said, I, right. me. The, and, and it told me that, okay, she's there. Willow's yeah, there. she's there a little bit. And she was paying attention to what she was doing. Um, but in a way that made it more unbelievable to me that she would, that Willow, who Willow I knew, yes. would do this. Yeah. It's my issues. I'm, I'm saying it's my issues having to deal with this. And I did have to expect her to take Xander's skin off, too. I, did, I thought she could take everyone's skin off. What do you no mean? skin for everyone. Ethan. What do you think of Dawn? Of Dawn? Yes. I don't know. Because <laughs> she ain't season one. Yeah, she's no. very... <laughs> it's, uh, it's she didn't totally come... different everything going on. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really, really is. Um, I was just curious because I, 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 I played it down with Jane, but I really can't stand the girl. Um, <laughs> and I really wish she'd go away. And I really wish she'd just disintegrate into a little ball. I was really hoping Willow would turn into a ball of goo. Well, I was hoping she would, but I don't, I don't, I don't have the anger and the hate. Either. I don't have anger and hate. I, she annoys the crap well, out of me. She annoys me, too. And I don't see her purpose. No. And, and I swear to God, I think the purpose is if Buffy doesn't come, come back for season eight, Okay, that's when I'll stop watching. There's a freaking Dawn spinoff. I am not. So I would not be surprised. That's when I'll stop. I'm, I'm not going to watch a Dawn spinoff. I would not watch a I don't care who goes to that show. Spike. Spike. Don't say that. <laughs> Don't throw that curveball at me. <laughs> I may have to just on principle. I'm just saying. Um, yeah. He's I, not. I he can't. That was the, that was probably the most annoying part. You know who I loved last night? Who I didn't think I would? Clem. Well, Clem, you always love. Who? How can you love uh, Clem? Yeah. Yeah, who doesn't? He's awesome. <laughs> I love that. Um, Anya, Anya was great last Loved night. Loved Anya last night because, she, uh, as as Jane mentioned, the that especially that one scene, that look yeah. on her face after um, she found out. That Xander saved the day. Um, there was just a lot of complexity in her role. She obviously wanted to help, but she didn't really love helping, but she knew she had to. Right. I thought that was great, and I thought Emma Caulfield was yes. awesome. Yes. And I did love how she, when she, when she sort of beamed herself into the, I won't say beam, when she trans, when she, I don't know, what is it? Is it transporting? Yeah, yeah. she like transported herself into the jail cell, and they're like, oh my god, and then she kind of goes out, and she goes, okay, you need to get these guys out of here. She's so matter of fact in what she does, and she gets a lot of good laughs. Like Jane was saying, yeah. and she gets the she gets the dramatic stuff too, and she's like, you I don't you know you don't have to believe me you know, but you got to get him out of here and just I just love how she delivers all her lines, and I just I just thought she was great. Well, what I what I, I don't do it justice. <laughs> you know what she said. Well, what I think is great about this show is their ability to take somebody like Anya and somebody like Spike and make them likable and make them make people root for them. Right, like and we've said this before. Like, are we? Horrible people because we still want Spike and Buffy to have some sort of relationship. I am I am so sick and tired of people calling people like me something bad just because I like Spike. Hey, you're something bad. <laughs> or because I like Spike and Buffy together. And yes, I still like Spike and Buffy so together. So do I. Even after what he almost did to her. So, so do s- I. Call me a sick bastard. Call me sick call me bastard. <laughs> call me whatever you want. You to. are a sick little puppy, <laughs> and I am too. So be it. I like them. I know I'm sick and insane. Ask my students. It's okay. They know I'm crazy. What do you think, Ethan, from a male perspective? I think he's a butt. <laughs> but that's... <laughs> I love that. I think he's a you, butt. You know what? When you see season two, you're going to see him from the... He comes in season two. Oh, yeah. Wait till you see him from the beginning. See, I watched old episodes. Even even when I was, like I said, even when I was watching The Yoko Factor, I was like, what an a-hole. I know. He is. There's but nothing about Spike that isn't. But he's funny. You have to give he him. He is funny. He, I thought it was hilarious when, when the guy came out and he thought he was going to be able to take him in his hands. Conflict, <laughs> and, like, 
like she, she, he's like a oh, fucker. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was great. I mean, and and when you, but the thing is, like Spike does so many things. When he was hor- when he did bad things before the chip, before the chip, you know, and then later when he started to sort of do nicer things, redeem himself. I mean, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just my love for Spike, which just all melted away. And maybe it's just <laughs> good writing. Maybe I'm insane. I think it's a combination. I think I think compensate good writing and my insanity. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. No, I think that they've done... I think Spike is one of the better written characters on this show in general. I think yeah. more of the writers have a better grasp of him than m- more of the characters, than most of the characters. Because you'll have a good Will episode, you'll have a good Xander episode. Certain people write better for Buffy right. or for Dawn. Right. But I think Spike in, is more consistent, and, and that's just a writer's thing. And I think that he's probably... More, mo, the, one of the more interesting as far as where you can go with him. And I'm not saying we don't love Xander or Willow or Anya because we do. I just think when it comes down to simple, uh, like, uh, twists and turns and yeah. p- possibilities in a and character. Surprises and changes. And, and then you combine that with an amazing actor yeah. who, oh my God, can do things that you never thought possible. Acting wise. <laughs> And yes, this is a Spike Love Fest. If you don't like it, you can leave. Because um, <laughs> we will be in yeah, five minutes. We'll be gone in a few minutes. I just, you know, I think it's a combination of all that, and, and you've got a really strong character, and I yeah. think that's the only reason he's not dead. Yeah, I think so. I seri- I mean, I'm really. not dead yet. So, um, let's do thank yous. Uh, we both. Uh, hey, my dad is running. We, we both. We all. We all liked the episode. Ethan, I think, liked it the most of all of us. And, I loved it. And, ooh. ooh. <laughs> loved it. Ethan and loved then, Buffy. Which was your favorite from season one? Oh yeah, what was your favorite uh, episode? If you don't know the name, just describe it. We'll, we'll know. Well, it. I really, I really like Nightmare. Ooh, I, that's but one of my favorites. That is one of hers. It was incredibly confusing at times. Wait till you see Restless, the season ender of season four. Oh, oh you're going to be screwed up. <laughs> Nightmare. It's, all, Nightmare. it's all dreams. Looking forward to that. It's all dreams. It's cool. But anyway, yeah, wait, anything else? Uh, uh, the pack. I like the pack. The pack, the, the pack was, was pretty... It's cool, huh? It's cool. E- they e- ate Principal Flutie. Yeah. Oh, I'm I sorry. I couldn't believe this. <laughs> I know you guys have said that he got eaten. I just assumed, like, by some but like, monster. Yeah, <laughs> but not like that, huh? <laughs> a bunch of kids. And, and and Never Kill a Boy on the First Date was great. The fifth, uh, and the, the puppet show. Yeah, the puppet, puppet show. show. Great. Puppet show's good. The Prophecy Girl is, like, my all-time favorite yeah, episode. Prophecy Girl's a favorite of all right, The very last episode. Yeah. Well, cool. Um, okay. So, yeah, we basically, in the whole season, I think, not exactly my favorite. Um, obviously, nothing's going to top season two for me ever in the history of ever. <laughs> and um, But I don't think it was the worst either. I think oh. they, they did stuff that they really needed to do this season to get these characters to another place. And whether you like it or not, I think it had to be done. And yep. hopefully next season people will be back. And I'll be it'll back. be a little lighter, a little more happy, a little more. I like the idea of more standalones. Yeah, I, I really, too. really like me that. Me too. I'm interested in that. Okay. All right. So. I get to watch lots of reruns. I know. Yeah. Reruns are cool. <laughs> Definitely. Absolutely. And FX. We got FX. Too. Okay. So it's time for us to say thank you to everyone who has made this show uh, possible in this last week. Yes. If you missed any of our announcements earlier, not do not fret. Um, we will uh, send some stuff out to the mailing list yes. and or update the website tonight. We want to thank all of our listeners, all of you guys out there. Sounds been, so simple. All of our listeners. Who have, been, who have been with us for the either all three years we've been on the show. But doing the show. Excuse me. And, I mean, especially through this, this has been a really tumultuous year for the Succubus Club this year. Mm -hmm. You know, we made the move. We had a a tragic death in the Succubus Club family. Um, You know, we also gained good things. We came to KLBC. We have producer Ethan. But it's been crazy. We've had a crazy year. And we want to thank everyone for sticking by through, you know, servers being down and through me going, you know, having to go to, you know, open house at school. Lots of, you know, (laughs) different things. I think this was the first year that we actually had someone sit in for me. Thank thank you, Fenric. Absolutely. And we just want to thank everyone for all your love and support and everyone who listened. You know, and, and we really want to thank you. And thank you for telling your friends about us because yes. if, if you haven't noticed, we really don't promote the show. Yeah, we don't. Uh, barely at all. We used to, we, and the thing is that since we don't have the computer right here anymore, we stopped pro- posting on the beta bronze. And that's sort of not really by choice necessarily. It's just sort of by like convenience. We haven't been able to. Right. 
So thank you to everybody who's told a friend. Yes. I get so many emails saying, oh, my friend just told me about you or I just heard about you from somebody I know. And so thank you. And if you if you can, when we come back in the fall, just keep doing it because yes. that's how we, our family grows and, yes. and we love you for it. And there, we also want to thank, we, we want to have a big thanks to uh, BAPS and Tabby LaRosa out there for all their support and all the time that they listen to us and send in you know, questions and, and things to help us out. Um, we also want to have a huge, huge thanks to City of Angel. Absolutely. Just for... I mean, when we met them at the PVP, just such an amazing group of people who put an amazing site for Angel. And just great people who work over there. They send us stuff to give away on the show. They help us out. They're just great, If, great you, if you guys people. don't even watch Angel, then you still should go you over. You still should go. Cityofangel.com is the website, and it's an amazingly beautiful site designed uh, just stunning and, yeah. and and so thorough anytime i have any question yes. about angel i go there and like kitty said the staff behind it is it's always nice when you meet people yes. who are worthy of your praise and they definitely are. yes absolutely we also want to thank you know what and this isn't you know i'm going to say this and people are going to be like, oh you're, you're being me no we want to thank the kitten board and for all the kittens who've listened and you know what even if you were angry at us or didn't like what was going on we still want to thank you for your input and for your your comments and criticism and all just listening we want to thank you for that absolutely i want to thank you for caring about this show and these yeah. characters because without um, even if our views are not the same as yours, I can never really badmouth somebody who loves the show. Absolutely. I mean, you obviously love the show, and you or at, at least you did at one point. <laughs> yeah. Or you loved a character, and that is to be commended, and um, I think that is what people are in this business for is to make people care absolutely so. we want to thank everyone over at the beta bronze everybody absolutely even if you don't listen to us even if you don't listen to us we still want to thank you we also want to thank everyone who goes to our chat room faithfully even though we can't go there anymore we used to be able to go there we used all to 10 of you punk or mike used to sit there and we used to be able to do that but we can't do it anymore but we want to thank everyone who goes in there and hangs out and talks to each other we want to thank everyone who, who has joined the mailing list um, it's, it's going strong. We keep getting new people join the mailing list all the time. Please join the mailing list so you can get updates and information. Tell your friends. Um, we also want to thank all the VIPs who have come in this past year. We've got Jane, Stephen tonight. We have... Um, we have uh, Stop! Sorry. Okay. The tape ended. Okay. Go! Okay, we have Jane Edmondson. <laughs> we have Stephen tonight. We have Tim Maneer. We have David Fury. We have Drew Greenberg. We also, that was this season. That was just this season. Um, you know, plus all the other people who've come in over the years. People have helped us get these people. People like Allison and Raina and all other, uh, who am I forgetting? People have helped us get VIPs, uh, people, or, you know, uh, on our show. Those of you who don't know, the VIPs come in on their own free time, and they do this because they want to talk to you guys and they want to right. talk to us about what they do. And it's not very common that they get asked to do stuff right. like this. So they really enjoy the experience of talking to you guys and taking your questions and um and they don't get paid to do it nope. they they don't they don't get anything out of it except to be able to talk to you guys right. so i really hope that it's something that you guys have enjoyed as yes. much as we have and, you know they come down and they sign stuff for us and it's great and the thing was that this all started in fact when the, the very first pvp we went to when we sort of ran into jane espenson and we happened to give her her our car we had business cards at the time that was when we had business cards yeah whatever that's our old our old website too and she actually contacted us. Yeah. And that started the ball rolling because other than that, we have had help getting other people in. You know, it through word of mouth, through Jane's told people. Through other people, yeah. Other people like Allison who's helped us get people on. Mm -hmm. You Ter know Terry who helped Let's get to yes, Terry. Abs oh my God, absolutely. For Terry and Raina and all those people that have helped us, because you know we're just like we said, we're just a little show. And every time we meet a VIP, we ask them, "Hey, come on our show." Doesn't mean they're going to. We are. We are. We seriously. People seem to think that we have some kind of power. We don't. We're just two kids on the radio, and uh, we get lucky. We get very lucky. Yes, and we have a lot of people help us. Yeah. Um, we also want to thank uh, Kale. We also want to thank Kale BC. Ken Borgers and um, Larry White, who have helped us to come here and to make the show possible for and, us this, this year. And who moved other people yes. so that we could keep this time slot just so that you guys could keep us on the same yes. time. It was amazing of them to do that. They didn't have to. Yes. And we thank them. And all much. the emails back and forth about, you know, making, if there's problems, just they did so much for us to get us here. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate them to no end. We also want to thank GM Mike, who's always been there to help us and to help us with the server. Since the beginning. Since the beginning with, with love and support. We also want to help all, we help. We also want to thank all the people who helped us with multimedia, who have put together transcripts um, of the show, who have made MP3s of the show. So you can hear the Stephen Dunn interview, the David. Fury interview and possibly the J.S. Vincent interview. People have done that for us. 
Um, you also, people who have put together uh, CDs that they've sent us, yes. specifically Heather and Jamie, who have um, helped us tremendously with uh, CDs full of songs from the episodes. We may not be able to, to play them after <laughs> next week. I know. But... Um, Depending on what happens with the with the internet stuff, but I want to thank you guys very much for doing that. Absolutely, and I also want to thank everyone who wished me happy birthday. I know that that's like long ago, but um, Jamie, you sent me this wonderful good have a chocolate in the mail, and I did just get it, and it's yummy, very delicious. Thank you so much, and to everyone who cares. And of course, last but not least, we want to thank producer Ethan. Yay, Yay Ethan! And we always said that in the beginning, you know, we when we, they said you're going to have a producer, we're like, we're like what are we going to do with them? Or, or not even just that. It's like, I, I, we don't need a producer. We're like, what do we need <laughs> that for? We're like, he's going to, they're going to make us change stuff. We, we don't want, we don't like change. You know, we didn't know what this entailed. That's and next year. That's next year, <laughs> I know. Now they're buttering us up. Uh-oh. <laughs> and we'll probably be like, okay, whatever. Um... <laughs> And and then you know we always joke and we see, we seemingly joke that now that we have Ethan what what would we have done without him and we truly truly feel that way absolutely and we just love having Ethan here we, he's just a part he just instantly became a part of us and a part of the Sykes Club family and we're so glad that he's here and we're glad that everybody else has embraced him as well he's got fan mail and yes, everything absolutely absolutely and of course wait, I, wait he he wants to respond oh, okay well, I just I have a thank you also okay you guys. Aww. oh. Oh my! He's what? getting something. He's getting up. Oh, <gasps> gifts! Oh, oh my God! This is I'm unspoiled. <laughs> oh. It's nothing big. It's just it's I, just a I, little... you know I've had fun here. So I've... oh, we're so girly. We're like oh, we're like oh, cards. <laughs> we're like silence. We're reading. And half a belated oh, happy birthday. Thank Aww. you. Oh, that's so sweet. I don't know why I'm trying to shove that back in there. Oh, cool. It's so sweet. Oh. Mine is a choking hazard. <laughs> I have Buffy. Who'd you get? I have Buffy. <laughs> Let me see. What, what's your Buffy wearing? Ooh, you got the leather pants. Red, <laughs> the red leather pants, Buffy. Ethan got us two Buffy... What are they uh, technically yeah, called? Yeah, the, the stand, the action figures. Like, oh, you know, I have the perfect this place is so for this, cool. too. Mine's wearing, them, mine's wearing red leather pants, and hers is wearing a leather jacket. Yeah, mine's got blue pants, leather jacket. She's got a crossbow, some stakes, and a knife. What a cool little bag. This you is made so too. cool. <laughs> thank you, Ethan. Oh, thank you, well, Ethan. Thank you. We're going to have big hugs in a minute. <laughs> and obviously for me, I want to thank Candy for always being there and just being the greatest co-host in the world. Um, and just, you know, she... What I, it's all been said. I don't know what else to say. She said she's just so wonderful. She is a huge part of my family, a huge part of my life, and it wouldn't, it just wouldn't, nothing would be the same without her. Thank you. I, I don't know what to say to that except to ditto. Think, yeah, ditto. Oh, ditto. Sorry, I keep kicking she her. Keeps kicking me. That's, that's how that's much I love her. I love her because I kick her. Um, now I want to thank um, first of all everybody who, um, as some of you know, my mother passed away about three months ago, and it was absolutely and still is the hardest time of my life. And if I'm not careful, I'm going to start crying. Um, but don't cry. Just look at Brett Heflin. <laughs> But thank you to everyone who sent cards, both through the uh, real mail and through email, and your condolences. It has uh, meant everything to me. And Kitty, who um, was there for me through all of it, who was there for me at the funeral when I really needed it, and and has been there for me for the last four years, um, has been one of my best friends. I, I don't know what my life would be like without you, and I don't ever want to know. So Me neither. I love you and thank you so much. I love you too. Okay, Aww. that was all sappy. <laughs> I know. Now I'm gonna cry too. So I guess we're we're over. We gotta get out of here. I'm sure every no one's probably heard half of this stuff. Uh-huh. But um, that's okay. I don't care. That's all right because you know this is the part of the show that we do want to you know do we do want to say. So don't forget about Vegas, everybody. July fifth, sixth, seventh, and and eighth. Um, even though she won't be here for the eighth. Right. I gotta go. I gotta go back and work. Um, but it, uh, obviously more information tonight when I get home. I'll update the site with Absolutely. Golden Fang. Uh, ballot will be up tonight. Don't forget to vote. Yes, endless appreciation information. Absolutely. So again, that's it. That's it. All right. Yay. Well, see, join the mailing list so you know what's going on. We'll see you guys. Wait, I don't have a song ready. Oh, you don't have the you don't have the, our closing song that we've been using for. Are you sure it's not already in there? It is in here. There you go. It's ready to go. See, you're, you're way more organized than you think. Yeah, right. <laughs> so we want to thank everyone for enduring and listening, and we love you all very much. And we'll see you guys next season. Remember, kids, the vampires can't come in if you don't invite them.